station of Fox Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are Arizona. A hard-earned day off for the D-backs yesterday. Tonight, back to work here at Chase Field to finish this homestand with two against the Tribe. Yes, from the shadow of Coshocton, Ohio, come the Cleveland Indians. Terry Francona's ball club tied for third in the AL Central. Just a few games behind division leading Detroit and here for two against the D-backs. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. This is the Diamondbacks and the Cleveland Indians, the first of two games against Bob Brenly's childhood team. This was your ball club, right? These were my guys. Not these guys, actually, but the Cleveland Indians back in 63, 64, 65. Those were the teams I grew up watching. Well, there's a couple of guys for you to watch in this two-game series for Cleveland. Some guys that have been red hot lately, Lonnie Chisenhall and Michael Brantley. Yeah, Lonnie Chisenhall with 11 more plate appearances will be the number one hitter in in the American League with that 355 batting average. Michael Brantley, one of the best players nobody knows anything about because he plays up there in the Rust Belt. Yeah, Chisholm Hall is a the guy they've tried to uh, lock in at third base. It's taken a few years, but lately he seems to have settled in there. Yeah, and uh, Chisholm Hall along with Michael Brantley, the two guys are kind of pacing the way offensively. They've been consistent since day one of the season, putting up good numbers, both with the power and the average. They've got some other guys that are a little more streaky, but there's no question. These are the two guys that pace this Indians offense. The yeah, D-backs fans remember how well A.J. Pollock was playing before he got hurt. That is Michael Brantley right now. It's Wade Miley for the Diamondbacks, Justin and Masterson for the Tribe. Unfamiliar foes meeting at Chase Field. The lineups are next on Fox Sports Arizona. Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. 
And welcome back to Chase Field after a much needed and well deserved day off. The D backs back to work tonight. A quick two game series against the Cleveland Indians. Brad Steinke with you outside the D backs dugout. Former Arizona Wildcat Terry Francona brings his tribe to town right in a three game losing streak. Time for our starting lineups brought to you by Tire Pros. And Tito has got some pop in his lineup. Michael Bradley has been on fire. The AL Player of the Week earlier this month, hitting 391 in June. Santana's average down, but he's got 11 home runs. And hitting seventh, what a great commodity for Tito. Lonnie Chisenhall hitting 355. Meantime, for the D-backs, Kirk Gibson is sending Ender Inciarte into the leadoff spot. Goldie has been simply sensational. That number three spot reached safely in 16 straight games during that span, hitting 333, four home runs at eight RBI. Miggy is in the cleanup spot, and Aaron Hill is number five. And on the bump tonight for the D-backs, it's Wade Miley, hoping he is masterful against Masterson. See what I did there? When we come back on Fox Sports Arizona, Steve and Bob have the call. It's the Tribe. It's the D-backs. You got it next. And the Tribe, first of two versus Cleveland here on Fox Sports Arizona. Steve Berthune, Bob Bradley, Brad Steinke along the way. Cleveland Indians coming in here, having been swept at home over the weekend by the Tigers. To fall further behind Detroit in the AL Central Tribe, now starting an eight-game road trip. They'll visit the D-backs, the Mariners, and the Dodgers. And on the mound for the Diamondbacks, tonight's Arizona Ford starting pitcher is Wade Miley. He's made 16 starts this year. The D-backs are seven and nine when Miley starts a game. Here's his pitching coach, Mike Harkey. Uh, he's got to command his fastball. I mean, that's uh, probably uh, one of Wade's biggest Achilles heels is his ability to be able to command his fastball in, 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 in big counts and in big situations with men in scoring position. Um, he did a lot of that in his last start and uh, just hoping to continue that. Yeah, coming off a good effort his last time out. Wednesday against Milwaukee here at Chase Field. Located well. And just as importantly, the slider noticeably better in his previous start. Yeah, it looked completely like a completely different pitch. Had a lot of downward action. The break was very late in the hitting zone as opposed to that big slurvy round slider that he throws on occasion. Those are his numbers against the Brewers last time out. His third consecutive no decision, even though he pitched well enough to win that one. Let's take a look at the defense behind Wade Miley tonight for the Diamondbacks. Here's how Gibby's going to line him up tonight. David Peralta in left, Ender Inciarte in center, Gerardo Parra over in right field. It'll be Prado at third base, D.D. Gregorius at short, Aaron Hill at second base, Paul Goldschmidt over at first, Miguel Montero doing the catching for lefty Wade Miley. 
You'll know Chris Owings a little banged up right now. He's got an ankle. He's got a shoulder. So CO another day off. Indeed, he is in there at short with Aaron Hill up the middle. Michael Bourne, the leadoff man, steps in for Cleveland. And we're set to go. First of two against the Indians here at Chase Field. Ball one says plate umpire Mike Everett. We are underway. Martin Prado sneaking in on the grass at third as Bourne shows bunt. It's one and one. You've heard me talk about those leadoff style hitters, uh, Tony Campana, Michael Bourne, those lefties, uh, throw them up and out over the plate, make them hit the ball in the air. That was a nice job that time by Wade Miley, keeping Michael Bourne off the bases. Five straight seasons of at least 40 stolen bases for Michael Bourne until that number dropped to 23 steals last year. The switch hitting shortstop as Drupal Cabrera at 260 and eight homers. Off to a very slow start this year. That 260 was 220 back in April. But he is heating up as of late. He's more than 60 points better than that since May the 1st. Strike one. Cabrera is a switch hitter. Better from the left-hand side. A 35-point drop as a right-hand hitter. He's got six of his eight home runs this year from the left-hand side. So this is a good matchup for Miley. 0-2. Obviously, we don't see a lot of the Indians. Uh, unusual treat here to play against a team from the banks of Lake Erie. But uh, I was kind of surprised to learn that was that one fouled out of play behind home plate. Uh, Look at the most wins in the American League over the last two years. Cleveland is fourth in the American League. Oakland A's at the top of the list, followed by the Tigers and the Red Sox, but Cleveland right there in fourth place in the American League over the last two years. Tied for third right now in the AL Central, which is a very close division. The Tigers and the Royals just ahead. One and two to Cabrera. Now the Indians have been hovering around 500 all year. Cleveland has been within two games of 500, either above or below, for 22 straight days. They've been doing a good job treading water while they've had some injuries. One and two to Cabrera. There's the strikeout. Is that new and improved Wade Miley slider? A lot of downward movement. That one started right in the middle of the strike zone and then just bottoms out, down and in. Cabrera swings right over the top. Devastating slider. He is throwing it a lot more frequently this year. Last year, Miley threw the slider 16% of the time. This year, it's up to about 25. Michael Brantley. Fourth in the American League and hitting at 325. 11 homers already a career high. Having a breakthrough season in his fourth full year in the big leagues at the age of 27. There's a strike quickly 0-2. And Brandley red hot right now. Hitting better than 410 over his last 15 games. Brantley began this year, didn't give real any indication that he was on his way to a big year. You can see Brantley and Chisholm, all the two players we highlighted, have had nice runs here. On the ground to first, easy play for Goldie. Miley works a one, two, three, first. We are just underway at Chase Field.
D-backs against Cleveland starter Justin Masterson, second in the major leagues in walks. He's a guy that Mark Trumbo used to face a lot when Trumbo was with the Angels. Here's the Mark Trumbo scouting report. He's a big dude. Gets on you quick. Uh, sinker slider guy. Um, you know, he's got a lot of deception. You see a lot of body coming at you. So, um, and the ball's, you know, obviously moving quite a bit, too. you got to get him up in the zone. I think everyone knows that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a battle. He's obviously a very good pitcher. But, uh, you know, makes mistakes like everyone else, and, and hopefully we jump on him. 29-year-old right-hander. He is a big dude. 6'6", 250. Big, heavy sink, but can be wild and lose the strike zone on occasion. To the point where the balls and strikes distribution will get about 50-50 at times. You see his numbers on this season. He's had two starts this year where he's walked one opposing batter, uh, at least two or more in every other start this year, including a couple of fives as I look on the stat sheet here. Heavy, heavy sinker, as you heard uh, on the scouting report right there. We'll throw a slider as well. His velocity's down a little bit this year, but when a sinker ball pitcher loses velocity, you usually gain movement. Maybe that's why he's having so much trouble keeping the ball in the strike zone. A lot of comparisons to what the Diamondbacks have gone through with Trevor Cahill. The Indians going through the same thing with Justin Masterson, who at times has been dominant. But uh, lately, just still trying to find it. Second in the majors in walks. Only Abaldo Jimenez has issued more bases on balls this year than Justin Masterson. You see an occasional four-seamer up in the zone, especially when he jumps ahead in the count, gets two strikes on a hitter tries to get him to chase up above the top of the zone but basically he's going to rely on that two seamer and the hard slider. He's run it full right out of the game here three and two to Ender in Ciarte who checks in at 202 on the year. Lead off walk case in points. Let's take a look at the defense behind Justin Masterson for the try. It'll be Michael Brantley out in left field. Michael Bourne in center. Ryan Rayburn over in right field. Lonnie Chisholm Hall at third base. As Drupal Cabrera and former ASU Sun Devil Jason Kipnis up the middle. Carlos Santana over at first base. Jan Gomes doing the catching for right-hander Justin Masters. And when we say a big dude, we mean a big dude. 6'6", 250. Ooh. You've heard of Donnie baseball. That is Lonnie baseball. Lonnie Chisholm Hall. Arado Parra. In Ciarte aboard after a leadoff walk. Strike one to Para in Ciarte, a perfect four for four in his stolen base attempts this year. Para, 255. That's the lowest his batting average has been since April 27th. He's scuffling right now. It's funny when those uh, scheduled off days pop up in the schedule as a manager you look up and down your roster and you say boy this guy could use an off day that guy could use an off day. This guy doesn't need an off day. I wish we were playing so he could get four at bats today but uh, I think Gerardo Parra probably more so than any other D backs benefited from that off day yesterday. It's a long time coming for the D backs games on 20 straight days. He's a good example of Masterson he will occasionally just lose it. And really struggle with his command. I think the comparison with Trevor Cahill is a good one. You know, both rely on that heavy sinking fastball. When good, they both have a good slider. But uh, both struggle to consistently find that strike zone. Masterson has spent all season making adjustments with that big heavy sinker trying to find command and location. The Indians coaches have said just rear back and fire that thing. Masterson says he just wants his fastball to eat. Let it get up there and do its thing. The goal is to let it eat and get the arm out there. And his coaches have told him that no matter what it feels like. In terms of your delivery and the adjustments and everything. Just make sure that you're coming through hard. Be more aggressive and that way you. Just want to get back to what makes you you which is throwing that hard heavy sinker. He's walked in Ciarte already in a battle with Parra here. Up the middle, base it into center, and Ciarte will stop there. A walk and a single to lead it off for the D-backs. 
Before Paul Goldschmidt steps in, let's take a look at our Valley Honda dealer keys to the ball game against the Tribe tonight. That was Carlos Santana playing first for the Indians. We couldn't resist. You've got to change your evil ways, D-back. Start winning some ball games, especially here at home. And we talked about Masterson and his command or lack thereof. So, rock and roll Hall of Fame reference. Wild thing. <laughs> Wild thing is even your go-to song in the yeah, keys to the game. I like absolutely. it. Absolutely. Here's Goldie. Together. Two on, nobody out. Paul and Goldschmidt. Strike one, says Mike Everett behind the plate. Goldie 308 and 15 homers. And the news yesterday that he increased his lead over Adrian Gonzalez atop the National League All-Star voting for first baseman. Now up by about 720,000 votes. Thanks to the tremendous efforts by d backs fans, and that effort is ongoing. Goldie's lead went up last week by a half million votes. The last d backs position player to start an All-Star game, Gonzo, in 2001. A ball and a strike. And Ciarte at second, par at first. Goldie did not have a base hit in the final two games of the Giants series, but he did walk five times over the weekend. Yeah, it became increasingly apparent that the Giants were just not going to let Paul Goldschmidt beat him. It's hard to blame him. Yeah. I mean, uh, you look at the configuration of this lineup right now, and certainly Miguel Montero's had hot streaks and cold streaks this season. Same for Aaron Hill, but. If you're sitting in an advance meeting on that other side of the field, the one guy that you're going to circle on that lineup card is Paul Goldschmidt. And some D-backs fans in the concourse earlier today. They had bags full of ballots. On the ground is short. Cabrera, Kipnis, Santana. Goldie beats it out. The throw, throw, pull him off the bag. And Enciarte is in at third. Here comes Terry Francona. He wants a discussion with Chad Fairchild, the first base umpire. Pretty apparent the foot came off the bag there, although it's kind of hard to tell. The bottom of Santana's shoe caked with dirt right there. It was hard to tell exactly when the foot did come off the bag. You can see Tito just uh, waiting for the sign from his dugout. The crew chief is Bill Miller. He's the third base umpire. Here he comes now. And it looks like they will take a look at this. You know, it's hard for me to call him Tito because I grew up watching his dad, whose name was Tito. <laughs> the Cleveland legend. Oh, yeah. This is a homecoming for uh, Terry, who lives in Arizona, loves it here, of course, played at U of A. Got a lot of tickets, a lot of lunches, a lot of phone calls about these. Quick two game visit. So we've got Chad Fairchild and Bill Miller on the headsets, and this is a challenge from Cleveland. And now they're looking at the video review on DBTV here. And the thing to keep in mind the, it's a catch when the ball is in the back of the mitt. What's off the back? Yeah, sure looked like it came off over there. And man manager challenges this year in terms of the expanded replay and review have overturned the calls almost 52% of the time. That's a tremendous success rate here three months into this. And while we're taking a look at this review right here, a tip of the cap to the Cleveland Indians. Uh, his title is the director of baseball information. Basically, he's the media relations director for the Indians, but uh, their media notes. Talked about it in our Valley Honda keys to the game with some musical references as you get another look. Bart Swaim on the Cleveland Indians media notes uses titles to songs. Oh wow. Secondhand news and talks about what's going on with the team lately over my head. Uh, talking about playing with that 500 mark. Go your own way. Dear Mr. Fantasy. 
course with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame being uh, right down the street from the ballpark in Cleveland. A nice job by Bart to incorporate some music into the media notes. I like it. He is playing right into your hands. One more look. When the ball is in the back of the mitt, it's a catch. Right? One more frame right there, probably. It looks like the foot is off the bag, but once again, you're taking a long time, which leads us to believe they're taking a long time in New York, looking at a variety of angles, trying to find one that provides clear and convincing evidence. You got a grade for replay so far? What do you think? I like it. I mean, I, I think uh, occasionally it, it drags on a little bit longer than uh, the fans would like to see, and certainly than I would like to see, but the bottom line is getting calls right. You know, you just hate to see games swung the wrong direction because of a bad call and uh, I, I think in that respect it served its purpose. We've seen a lot of calls overturned that could have possibly swung the outcome of the game in the wrong direction. He is safe at first. The Indians have lost their challenge three batters into the ball game. Tip of the cap to Bobby Freeman. I don't know if anybody noticed, but he was playing. You ain't seen nothing yet there as the replay was taking place. <laughs> so that is a fielder's choice, six to four on the scoring. With Parr out at second, Goldie's aboard at first, and NC Arte at third, the one out. Miguel Montero. Miggy 264, 10 homers. One shy of his total from all of last year. 41 RBIs, one shy of last year's total. With an RBI double. He has matched his RBI total from all of last season. It's 1 0 D backs. June 24th. Not bad. Not bad at all. And a big reason that he's matched last year's RBI total is this approach heavy sinking fastball down and out over the plate. Masterson wants left handed hitters to try to pull that ball, which will result in a ground ball to the second baseman nine times out of ten. But instead, Goldie stays on it, drives it over the head of Michael Brantley in left field for an RBI. You've got Goldie at third, Miggy at second, still only one out, and Aaron Hill steps in. A rough start so far for Justin Masterson. There's strike one. Aaron Hill, 251, six homers. Aaron Hill, four for his last 22. He has seen Justin Masterson before. Of course, Aaron Hill, a former Blue Jay. Aaron Hill has not drawn a walk in June. He has now gone 27 straight games without a base on balls. Last time he walked May 25th, which is one reason why the on base percentage sits at 290 right now. Two and two. And Aaron trying to get things going offensively. Big RBI spot right here. Second and third, one out. Aces that one down in the dirt. Strikeout for Masterson. Two down. Third baseman, number 14, Martin Prado. Martin Prado. 
Already a 24 pitch inning for Justin Masterson. Prado 274, three homers. He's hit safely in five of his last six. That one drops in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Oh, and two. That thing is moving as it gets up there. Yeah, it looked bad because that time Gomes uh, was set up on the inside corner and had to reach across the plate to catch that sinker, but it clearly caught the strike zone. Prado can hold up. Masterson strands two, but the D backs get one and throw one. After Miguel Montero's 42nd RBI, it's 1 0 D backs. Nothing. D-backs set for the second inning. Diamondbacks and Tribe and Paul Goldschmidt the lead over Adrian Gonzalez now more than 700,000 votes for the Gold Star game July 15th on Fox. Nicely done Diamondbacks fans and Paul Goldschmidt fans all around the country. I think they finally wised up and took a look at the numbers and uh, started to read some of the reports on Paul Goldschmidt. He's right where he should be. Carlos Santana leads it off for Cleveland against Wade Miley who worked a one two three first strike one says Mike Everett. Santana having a very odd season miserable for two months but hot right now. He's got a 202 batting average. On May 21st that average for the season was 146. So over his last 20 games he's hit better than 330 and raised that average by more than 55 points. Kind of a line drawn when he went on the seven day uh, concussion disabled list wasn't doing anything before that but uh, spent a week on the concussion DL and came back with a vengeance. 16 games since he came back from the DL 333 five homers and 12 driven in. He's been like a different guy 3 1. Lead off walk. Home run derby Monday from Target Field in Minneapolis and then the All-Star Game Tuesday only on Fox. You can vote at MLB.com through July 3rd. Here's the former Sun Devil Jason Kipnis, the J.K. Kid. An All-Star last year. 
hit 284 with 17 home runs. He has not been at that level this year. There's strike one. Kipnis missed almost all of May, sat out 26 games with a strained right oblique. 241 on the year and three homers. What do you make of his batting stance? Yeah, once again, it's one of those deals. It starts out looking extremely odd, but by the time Wade Miley's ready to deliver the pitch, he looks like just about every other hitter in the big leagues, but starts out with that flat back out behind his back, pointing straight toward the backstop. Well, since he came back from the oblique, he's hit 247 in 23 games, but he's had only three extra base hits since he's come back off the DL. Bounces one up the middle off the glove of Hill and into center field. Santana will stop there. And Kipnis is aboard. First hit for Cleveland. Yeah, it looked like a potential double play leading Aaron Hill right to the bag at second. He went down to a knee and the ball just kicked off his glove. There you see off the little finger of the glove gets out into shallow center field. Fortunately Santana does not run well had to hold his second base. First and second nobody out. Jan Gomes the catcher. From Brazil. He's got World Cup fever 266 and seven homers. He's not the only one. So Luis Suarez today take a bite out of an Italian player. In that matchup, bit him in the shoulder. Mike Tyson, huh? Yeah. I didn't know that went on in uh, soccer. It's not supposed to. No biting. One and oh to Jan Gomes. He's hit in five in a row. Yeah, Gomes, uh, Probably the only guy in this Indians lineup that I wrote down a WW won't walk. He has drawn 15 base on balls uh, in 65 ball games this year, but uh, most of these Indians are pretty close to 50 50 strikeouts to walks. Base hit in the left. They will wave Santana. Peralta comes up throwing. It is cut off, and the game is tied. RBI 24 for Jan Gomes. It's 1 1. Third baseman, number eight, Lonnie Jezenal. Which was down. Just happened to find that hole in the left side of the infield. Very easily could have been a double play grounder, but big gap on that left side of the infield. Santana waved around third base. I mentioned before, it doesn't run extremely well, but scored easily on that base hit into left. Lonnie Chisenhall, the third baseman. He's in there at 355, just a few AB shy of qualifying for the batting title in the American League. And this is a guy the Indians have been waiting on to step up and take the third base job for three seasons now. Never with any sustained success, but lately he has started to play up to his potential and then some after hitting only 225 last year. Especially with runners in scoring position recently. He's 11 for his last 19 with three homers and 17 runs driven in. Remember, the Indians were a playoff team last season. Chisholm Hall hit the 225. Look at the numbers he's putting up here in these situations. The end of the year last year in a third base platoon with Mike Avilas and then lost the starting job at third this spring to Carlos Santana. Santana is now the first baseman. Chisholm Hall had a ridiculous month of May. 26 games in May. He hit 373. And he's hitting about 3.30 here in June. Drives that one into right center field, and this is trouble. Kipnis will come in and score. Holmes right behind. They're waving him in, and Chisenhall hits for third. Now they're 
calling him Lonnie Baseball in Cleveland, and he just saw why. We showed you a bunch of numbers for Chisenhall, and uh, with that base hit against a left-handed pitcher, he's nearly batting 400 against lefties this year. It was 389 before this triple went down and got it once again. Not a bad pitch from Wade Miley. Just good hitting from Lonnie Chisenhall to split that gap in right center field. A walk to Santana, a single by Kipnis, a single by Gomes, a triple by Chisenhall, and it's 3 1 Cleveland. That'll bring up Ryan Rayburn with Miley still looking for his first out here in the second. Rayburn getting the start in right field tonight. He has started mostly as a DH for Cleveland this year and field in on the edge of the grass. There's ball one. And you might think, okay, Cleveland gets a lift here from putting Rayburn in right. They get that extra right hand bat in there against Miley, but Rayburn at 211 on the year. Hitting only 195 against lefties. Swings through that one. It's one and one. Diamondbacks with one in the home half of the first. Indians have responded with three in the top of the second. Two and two. Wade Miley has won one game since April 6th. He is one and five over his last 13 starts and now trails at 3 1. Does not get the call there. It's full three and two. He comes in and scores. It's 4 1 Indians. Hey, fans, follow every Diamondbacks game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, game of the day, and much, much more. Download on the App Store or visit dbacks.com. So the first four Indians hitters in the second reach against Miley, and now they have all scored. One out, Justin Masterson stamps in. 0-1-1 on the Indians pitcher. It's been an adventurous ball game so far for the first base umpire right near that Cleveland dugout. Well, nice play by Martin Prado had the right guy running in the opposing pitcher big guy lumbering down that first baseline. Oh my. Oops. Oops is right. And of course remember the Indians cannot challenge. They already used their challenge three batters into the ball game. Michael Bourne, the leadoff man, flying out his first time. You asked me about replay earlier. That's one thing I do have an issue with. What do you got? The challenges? Yeah, I mean, you know, Terry Francona challenged and he lost the right to challenge again. And they might miss 10 more calls tonight against the Indians and he will have no challenges okay, available. But devil's advocate, you mentioned earlier, you're not thrilled with how long it takes. If they have 10 calls that are questionable, you're going to challenge 10 of them? We'll be here all night. Well, we can tweak that too. What do you got? I mean, we saw the replay. Boom. He was safe. You don't have to get on the horn back to New York to know that. If there was an extra umpire at the ballpark that just saw the same replay we did, you play on. It doesn't take three minutes to look at a replay. So you want to put a guy here in the ballpark. I think I so. in the sky. I think so. 
They just spent 35 million on a nice shiny new headquarters down there in New York. Unnecessary. Michael Bourne strikes out, but the Indians get four and take a 4-1 lead. Diamondbacks trail it 4-1. Bottom second here, Chase Field. Fans, it's that time again. Tweet us your fan photo using the hashtag AZFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in our broadcast later tonight. Brought to you by AT&T. After Brandon Webb's triumphant week with the Brendley Committee, what's uh, happening tonight? Well, Brandon did such a tremendous job that I'm, I'm thinking about making him the CEO of the committee, and he can make all the choices for the rest of the year. So that's how good he did. So you'd just really be like a figurehead. Yeah, that's fine. That's all. Right. <laughs> David Peralta. I will gladly bequeath my duties to Brandon <laughs> Webb. I'll let you know if Webby texts in from home. Justin Masterson gave up a run in the first. Suddenly he's got a 4-1 lead. And so the D-backs have some work to do here. Peralta ahead 2-0. Now it looks like the Diamondbacks offensively had the right approach against Masterson in that first inning. Five of the six batters took the first pitch for a strike one. Unfortunately, that led to 3 0 oh, oh, and 2 counts. But when you're facing a pitcher that struggles with his command, that's when you really have to trust yourself. Your ability to hit with two strikes, force him to throw a lot of pitches, force him to throw pitches within the strike zone. Well, just like the first inning, Masterson starts off by walking the leadoff man. Peralta aboard. Here's Didi Gregorius. It's a wise idea as well to put pressure on this Indians defense. They've made more errors than any other team in Major League Baseball with their 67 errors coming into play tonight. Put runners on base, put pressure on that defense. It's funny, their defense has shifted around somewhat. They've had some key guys out. They started with Santana, who had been their catcher for three years, as their third baseman trying to move him out from behind the plate. And Nick Swisher at first. Swisher got hurt. Santana got hurt. Chisenhall started hitting. Now Santana's over at first. Base it into right. Peralta will stop at second. A walk and a single to lead off the second for the D-backs. Yeah, Didi taking advantage of that hole on the right side of the infield. You saw Santana not real aggressive jumping off that bag over there at first base. And D.D. found the hole on the right side. And this will give Wade Miley an opportunity to move the runners along here. And Gomes, the catcher, setting the defense. I 
think occasionally this can be challenging for American League teams playing under National League rules because there's very little bunting when you have a DH for both sides. <laughs> Doesn't come up a lot. Not a lot. So, you know, this bunt defense stuff is a, a little strange to American League teams. And don't forget, you've got a guy at first in Santana who used to be the catcher and the third baseman and is still learning the position over there. He's coming crashing in from his new spot at first. Indians did what people have been suggesting that the, the Giants should do at some point maybe with Buster Posey. They had a guy they liked a lot as an offensive player and said we got to move him out from behind home plate. And there is Santana at first one and one on Miley. Got to be hard to bunt against a big guy like Masterson who's got that heavy sink. The ball's moving, cutting, darting, diving. You just have to make sure if you're Wade Miley and that ball does start to sink to go down with both hands. A lot of times you have a tendency to just drop the top hand and that puts the bat at a very awkward angle to put that ball down fair. It all goes down as one unit. Try to keep that bat parallel to the ground, and it should be actually a little bit easier to bunt against a sinker ball pitcher because the natural motion, uh, you're going to get the top of the ball a lot. You can see that the barrel of the bat drop down below the base hand that time. Cannot get the bunt down. There's a the strikeout. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. And our promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. So now with one out, Ender Enciarte will step in. He walked and scored his first time up. So once again, Masterson finds himself in trouble. But got an unproductive out in Miley. Now he'll work to the leadoff man in Ciarte. That's out of play. Mickey Calloway is the Indians pitching coach. He has told Masterson this year that he didn't even care how many balls and strikes he threw. He just wanted him to get his delivery to the point where it was producing more power. This is a guy that can overpower hitters. And that led to some moments where he was yanking some balls, and that gets back to the command and control issues, but the overall sense was they started to get him in a decent rhythm when he just thought about rearing back and firing. And Ciarte laces that into center. They will wave Peralta. The throw is cut off and it's 4-2. RBI number five for Ender and Ciarte. Time by NCR Day. He's kind of leaning out of that batter's box, reaches out, takes that low and away pitch right back up the middle of the field. Nicely done. Oh, nice job of staying down on that. I don't think I'm sliding across on Fox Sports' Phantom Cam, which is back with us this week. And now it's a 4 2 ball game. Ronald Parra single his first time up. Bad Wade Miley couldn't get that sack bunt down. Might have cost the Diamondbacks a run right there. Of course, you never know exactly how they're going to pitch to the next hitter should there be runners at second and third with one out instead of first and second with nobody out. And Masterson quickly behind 2 and 0. Masterson a no decision in his last start. That was Thursday against the Angels. Pitched well, one run, four hits in seven through a season high 116 pitches. But it was a good example of what he has been like. He got first pitch strikes on only seven of the 26 he faced. He's been behind all night tonight. Parra laces that to center. Bourne catches it. And that's the second out. There's Goldie. 
Good swing, good contact that time by Gerardo. Mentioned he's been struggling a little bit lately. Got that base hit back in the first inning and struck that ball well to straightaway center. Took a nice running catch from Michael Bourne to retire it. Diamondbacks got a run in the first, but they stranded two. And now with two on and two out is Paul Goldsmith. He did not go. Chad Fairchild down at first. Saturday and Sunday, just the fourth time all season that Goldie has gone without a hit in back to back games. Once again, Masterson behind 2 0. Oh. He has thrown 45 pitches so far, 24 strikes, 21 balls. He's right about that 50 50 mark. This is on the 2 1 pitch. It's even 2 and 2. You got a heavy sinker like Masterson. This is what you can do when you fall behind the count 2 0. Throw two sinkers right down the middle of the plate. One at 87, one at 88. And Goldie right over the top of them both times. That's what they've been trying to get Trevor Cahill to do. Yeah, just pound away at that zone with some movement. You don't have to be fine. You don't have to be exact. Aim for the catcher's mask and let the ball go wherever it wants to go. Well, the other end of that is what we just saw there. He can get wild at times. Masterson last year led the league with 17 hit batters. He's got nine already this year to go along with nine wild pitches. Something to keep in mind when the Diamondbacks get a runner on at third base. Three balls and two strikes. Two outs. There go the runners. Called strike three, says Mike Everett. And once again, the Diamondbacks get one, but they leave two. That was a strike. Hey fans, bring your family to Chase Field on Sunday, July 20th. First 5,000 kids will get a back-to-school backpack. Remember to ask for the D-Backs Value Pack. That includes a ticket, 
A hot dog or a Subway sandwich, regular Pepsi and a cookie, all for only $21. Get your tickets at slash value. As Dribble Cabrera slashes that out into right center, and once again, there is Ender and Ciarte. We have seen him cover that gap time and time again this year. That ball was struck well off the bat of Cabrera, but a tremendous jump by Ender Inciarte. Not only does he have great speed, he seems to get a real good read of the ball off the bat, goes right to the spot, makes it look like an easy play. He covered a lot of ground. Quickly one out for Michael Brantley, who grounded out his first time, the hottest hitter in this lineup. It's a sad day, partner, when you read the promo for the backpack back to school. I, you know, I was oh. thinking that already. I hate to even think about that. What is your objection? Well, this summer is baseball, outdoors, you know, having fun, no school, no teachers, dirty looks, all that stuff, you know. Back to school already? Like the summertime Grinch. <laughs> 101. I was asked to read the promo, and I, I did so. I know, I know. It wasn't your choice. I apologize for upsetting all the kitties. Back to school. S K U L E. And their parents. <laughs> now the parents are ready for the kids to go back to school. Yeah. They just got out. Uh, the parents are ready to send them back. <laughs> one and one. Wade Miley looking uh, for a quick inning here at a one, two, three first. But then a four run Indian second. First four for Cleveland reached in the second inning. They all scored. And now he's battling with a guy now known in Cleveland as Dr. Smooth, Michael Brantley. Dr. Smooth. Hit 325 on the year, fourth in the league in hitting, and you get a nickname and a t shirt. That's the deal. Hard back up the middle for a one out single. Well, Michael Brantley is pretty smooth. Nice stroke that time stays right on that Wade Miley pitch. And mentioned he's hitting lefties uh, just as good as righties this year. And he can run too. He is nine for nine in his stolen base attempts. Carlos Santana walked and scored. He started off that four run Cleveland second. And Santana's a fascinating guy. Came into the ball game hitting 202 on the year. His on base percentage was 354. That's hard to do. Second in the major leagues in walks behind only Jose Bautista. Santana, a difficult season, hit 151 in April, 169 in May. Worked at third base all spring and now finds himself playing first where he appears to have found a home. He went through a concussion as well, which seems to have ended his catching days once and for all. And they think that all the work he put in at third this spring has really helped him out. This month at first base. Two balls and a strike. And you mentioned how he seems like a different guy since he came off the seven day concussion DL. Terry Francona said that may have been a blessing in disguise. Gave Santana kind of a chance to clear his head, hit the reset button. And he's been a different hitter ever since he came off the DL. Lines a base hit into left. A pair of one out singles against Wade Miley. And that ball that Cabrera hit was smoked as well for the first out. Second baseman, Jason Kipnis. Two on, one out, Jason Kipnis singled and scored his first time. Former 
Pac-10 Player of the Year for the Sun Devils back when it was the Pac-10. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day when they played at Packard Stadium, which is no more. Oh, too bad, huh? Now they're going to go to Phoenix Muni and play. And the A's will move to Mesa now that the Cubs have moved down. And we've got the J.K. kid from Northbrook, Illinois. Started his collegiate career at Kentucky and then transferred to ASU. Drafted by the Padres in the fourth round, didn't sign, went in the second round to Cleveland the following season. Went to the University of Kentucky because uh, he wanted to play where Brandon Webb played. Is that in the notes? No, I just made it up. <laughs> Boy, Webby's not even here and he's just <laughs> getting beaten up. His presence is always here, even if he's physically not in the building. It's like the force. That's a Star Wars thing. You probably don't know. <laughs> Two on, one out. Here's Kipton. Swing and a miss. Score the ball game. Love to see that. Looks like they bought the governor scorebook at the pro shop there. Team store. I did not get to see what Greg Schulte did on the off day. You uh, did some fishing, I understand. Yeah, did a little river fishing, something that's kind of out of my league, but... Uh gentleman that I went with is a very good river fisherman showed me where the holes were where to throw my bait it was it was awesome and waited in there about waist high a couple times good day for it on the ground is short off of Dini tries to throw a fitness and he can't the bases are loaded hard hit the shortstop Dini knocked it down but had no play at first and this is possibly an instance where not knowing the opposition well uh, hurt the Diamondbacks. Didi still had time to get Santana at second base. Even after the kick right there, he still had time to go to second and at least get one sure out. But by the time he fires it across the diamond, Kipnis is able to leg it out. So it's one out, base is loaded. That is E6, the error on Gregorius. Allowing Kipnis to reach, and here's Jan Gomes, who had an RBI single and scored a run his first time. In the air to right field, Gerardo Parra. Brantley is at third. Five two, Cleveland. up Lonnie Chisenhall who last time up hit a two run triple his first of the year. The way this Indians lineup is set up you, know, you kind of forget about Chisenhall we featured him in our open to the show one of the better offensive players on this Indians roster hiding down in that seven spot in the lineup for situations just like this when the guys in the middle of the order get on base Chisenhall has RBI opportunities. And Chisenhall is a guy who says he is not up there to walk. An aggressive hitter, a guy that the Indians coaches say has really turned into a good hitter and has gotten to the point where he understands his swing, knows how to shorten it up when it feels a little long, and that allows him more time to be more selective and get his pitch. 101. And I would say, based on a 373 May and a 330 June, that it's working. How about this too? Chisenhall, June 9th at Texas. First player in Major League history to have at least three homers, five hits, and nine RBIs and only five plate appearances in a single game. Wow. Pretty good night. That's a good month. 
Shoots it the other way in the hole. It's short. Prado cuts it off. They get the force on Kipnis. And that's the inning. Cleveland adds a run. They lead it 5-2. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Miguel Montero leads it off for the Diamondbacks. Field D backs trailing the Indians by a score of five to two. Leading off the inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks, Miguel Montero. He is sporting a brand new arm guard tonight. He said the old one was too stiff, too rigid. This one much more pliable. Guys, he also added the old one. It had simply run out of base hits. So uh, if the first inning with that RBI double is any indication, I like this new arm guard much, much better. That arm guard is on fire right now. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. An RBI double for Miguel Montero, his 42nd RBI of the year. We need to order new arm guards for everybody. Get him up here. So Miggy now at 267. Justin Masterson, 49 pitches through two innings, only 27 for strikes. There's the strike, 0 and 1. Mentioned that uh, with the RBI double, Montero matched his RBI total from all of last year. He's only one home run shy, matching the home run total from last season. And Mickey with five homers in June, that equals his home run total from the first two months of the season combined. 1 and 1. That was the Mickey swing from last year. Where the head comes flying up and the balance goes. All strike three, Mike Everett. That's five strikeouts for Justin Masterson. Hey fans, anytime the D back scores six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Aaron Hill struck out his first time. And the average for Aaron right now at an even 250. And he is walking less often than ever before and striking out more frequently than ever before. Has not drawn a walk in June. Low roller near the mound. Masterson covers. Two down. Martin Prado. Third baseman. Martin 
Masterson a 14 game winner for Cleveland last year. Worked to a 3 4 5 ERA through three shutouts last season. He's got a 5 2 lead with two outs here in the third. Masterson born in Kingston, Jamaica. Friends of yours? They will be. <laughs> yeah, what in the world have we got going here? The, the hats have D-backs logos on them. At least one does. That looks cool. Some kind of a defunct barbershop quartet. Obviously, they haven't been near a barbershop. Well, Masterson gives Prado a shave right there, and Martin doesn't seem too happy. We mentioned that Masterson can be wild, hit 17 batters last year. Number 10 on the season so far, that sinker starting way off the plate inside. Looked like it might have hit Prado on the right leg. It was behind him. What a moment. Back of the lip. Ooh. Yeah, he got the left leg out of the way. It got him on the inside of the right thigh. That ball was behind him and moving farther in. I've seen those guys with the hats before. They're here a lot. They're great fans. David Peralta. Two and zero. Very high in the air along the right field line. Rayburn. Has just enough room, and that's the inning. We are through three. Diamondbacks trail the tribe 5 2. Ryan Rayburn will lead off the fourth for the Indians. Diamondbacks trail at 5 2. Rayburn, Masterson, and Bourne, 8 9 and 1 for Cleveland. 
Raven drove in a run his first time up with a sacrifice fly. Justin Masterson has had a fairly wild night. Diamondbacks just not able to take advantage as of yet. Prado spins and throws. One away. I say it was a little bit puzzling to see David Peralta swinging at a 3 0 pitch against a guy that's really struggled to find the strike zone in the early going here. Popped it up down that right field line to make the final out of the bottom half of the third inning. And you get a walk there. You get the the tying run to the plate and Didi who could pull one down the line and tie it up. One on one to Justin Masterson. Mentioned that uh, Masterson was born in Jamaica. Went to high school in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Is that near Coshocton? I'm not really familiar with Beaver Creek, to tell you the truth. Sounds good, anyway. Yeah, it must be on the western part of the state. I'm yeah. more familiar with the eastern part of the state. I think it's over near Dayton somewhere, I'm being told. As Miley strikes out Masterson. Anyway, he wound up at San Diego State. And was a second round pick by the Red Sox in 06. Center fielder. Was actually selected just five picks after Oakland drafted Trevor Cahill. Michael Bourne, the leadoff man. Really hoping for a quick inning here. And he will not get it. That one gets down and throw Peralta in left. And Bourne has good speed. And Ciarte over there to back up the play, and Bourne is at second. He's clanked it. Yeah, he did. Just kind of took his eye off of it, assumed it was just going to be an easy play. He's starting to look down for whatever reason. The ball hits off the fingers of his glove. I would assume that's a single and an E on uh, David Peralta in left field to allow Bourne to advance on to second. You are correct, sir. So a single E7, Bourne at second, two down as Drupal Cabrera for two. There's the strike. As Drupal Cabrera, two time All Star, 2011 and 2012, fell off a bit last year, hit 242. Wade Miley now at 70 pitches, 48 for strikes. Hard down the line at third, but foul. Right by Dick Robertson down there. Dick is our Golden Glover down the left field line tonight, and the veteran Doc Rosenblatt manning the right field line. Yeah, no one can wear a pair of khakis like Doc Rosenblatt. He's like the Jim Harbaugh of Golden Glovers. Always at the ready, though. Doc, uh, I tell you, he looks forward to foul balls. <laughs> on the ground to second, right to Aaron Hill. And Miley is out of the inning. Bottom four on the way. D backs down 5 2.
Flashback. Well, June 25th. A remarkable date in D-backs history. It's not today, it's tomorrow. Couple of no hitters. One against the Diamondbacks, one for the Diamondbacks. Edwin Jackson, you want to talk about working hard for a no hitter? I think he had eight walks in that ball game. They don't always have to be pretty, but they go down as no notes. Right? And the one by, uh, I believe that was Jose Jimenez from the Cardinals. That was a stretch when Randy Johnson got no hit, one hit, two hit, and three hit against him in four consecutive ah. starts. So what we're driving at is tune in Fox Sports Arizona tomorrow uh, for a no hitter. There you go. Uh, tomorrow is June 25th. So uh, set the uh, the DVR. I'm in back line pregame show comes your way at six. D.D. Gregorius leads off the fourth against Justin Masterson. Good news for Chase Anderson. Tomorrow starter. Oh no, the 25th. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're in. Yeah. yeah, Chase will throw a no hitter tomorrow. So we got that going for us, which is good, I think. Santana takes care of that one. One away. So tomorrow for the no hitter, we'll have Chase Anderson. <laughs> All right, well, I guess on the other hand, it, it might be Corey Kluber, who's pitched really well this year for Cleveland. I'd much prefer Chase Anderson myself. But I'm uh, with you. Yeah, we'll you. show up and see Corey Kluber, really a strong pitcher. Another one of those guys under the radar because he pitches in the Rust Belt. The fighting sons of the Cuyahoga. Tom Candiotti, uh, our longtime Indian great. Mm -hmm. Candy pitched uh, parts of seven seasons with a tribe. There's uh, Tom Candiotti, Leo Gilmartin in the background overseeing, as he often does. Uh, let's see, Candy, 183 games with Cleveland, 73 and 66, a 3.62 ERA. Look at this. This is insane. Ha! This is a tremendous stat. Tom Candiotti. With Cleveland, 45 complete games. 45! Hey. Seven shutouts. Finish what you start. 45 complete games. That's amazing. Shows you how much times have changed. He can't even complete a game now when he's doing radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the Cardinal sin. He walks the pitcher. Man, I, I tell you. I'm not so sure that Masterson can throw three strikes before he throws four balls. I think if you walk up there without a bat, you've got a good chance of getting on base via the base on balls. Well, so far he has walked three and hit a batter. Miley, the runner at first, one out, Ender Inciarte has uh, walked and singled. He's scored a run. He has driven in a run. So... A good night for Ender in the leadoff spot. Yeah, with that plunking of Prado back in the third inning, uh, Masterson uh, increases his lead over A.J. Burnett for most guys hit since the 2012 season. And an eight hit batter lead over A.J. Burnett. <laughs> Talk about wild thing. <laughs> A.J. Burnett had one of those no hitters where he walks like 15 guys. Mm -hmm. Nice bump by Ender and Ciarte. Chisenhall will have to eat it. And Ender's aboard. There you go, BB. I love it. I love it. He's been on base three times tonight in the leadoff spot. Well, I mean, that is just textbook right there. Got it far enough onto the grass down that third baseline. No chance it was going to roll off the lip there and go into foul territory. By the time Chisenhall gets to it, he has absolutely no play. So Miley's at second in Ciarte at first. One out. Once again, the Diamondbacks have a couple of base runners, and they need that big hit. They've had chances to get back in this thing. They look to Gerardo Parra, who's one for two, single in the first. Masterson, 75 pitches. We talked about the 50 50 ratio. 38 strikes, 37 balls. Mm. That is throwing the right. 
base hit. They're going to stop Miley at third, and the bases are loaded for Paul Goldschmidt. Parra two for three. Wise move that time by Glenn Sherlock, as tempting as it may have been to send Wade Miley on home. Ryan Rayburn got to that ball pretty quickly. Miley wasn't quite to the base at third yet, and with Goldie coming up, you cannot afford to get your pitcher thrown out at home plate. Miley at third, and Ciarte's at second. Parr is the tying run at first. One out for Goldie. Strike one. Chisholm Hall knocks it down at third. He'll get one. A run scores. It's five three. That time by Chisenhall. That ball just ate him up down there at third base. He still tries to get the lead man, which he's able to do. Parra does a nice job of disrupting the play out there at second, and Goldie legs it out for an RBI fielder's choice. 5 4 on the out, the RBI for Goldie. Thought maybe Chisenhall, after he initially bobbled that ball, would think about going home and getting the force play on Wade Miley, try to keep that run off the board, but uh, decided to go up the middle of the field and fortunately for him was just able to get par. Well, with one out, Masterson walked the pitcher, and now the pitcher has come in and scored the third run for Arizona. They're on the corners, two down for Miggy. 1 0. Oh. Montero with RBI double in the first. He struck out looking his last time up one for two. Miggy doubled the left field in his first at bat of this game to drive home Ender Inciarte with the D-backs first run. Masters is now just trying to stay inside. Everything in. Two sinkers off the plate inside to start this sequence. Diamondbacks have had a few innings, two in fact tonight, where they have left two on. And trying to avoid that fate here in this inning. Montero ahead 3 0. Base hit. Enciarte scores. Goldie will stop at second. It's 5 4. Tried to work him in, in, in. Finally throws one pitch out over the plate and down. And Miggy lines that into left field for an RBI base hit. I guarantee you, Corey Kluber, tomorrow night starter for the Indians, has been watching these at bats, probably making some mental notes, if not making physical notes. Don't pitch Montero out over the plate. Well, it looks like Mickey Calloway, the Indians pitching coach, will go out there and have a word with Masterson. Who has thrown 82 pitches, 42 strikes, and 40 balls? Fans come out to Chase Field July 18th through 20th. D-backs and Cubs, if your idea of a perfect game includes unlimited hot dogs, peanuts, popcorn, soda, and more, check out our all-you-can-eat seats on the Diamondback level, a great view of the ball game, plus all your favorite foods. For tickets, dbacks.com slash A-Y-C-E-S, all-you-can-eat seats. Two on, two out, Aaron Hill. Aaron Hill might not see another fastball the rest of his career. He was... Seeing 70% fastballs in April. 
the number here in June has dropped to less than 60 percent and instead he's seeing a lot more breaking balls and he's chasing and the more he chases the more he'll see and that has really been what Aaron's offensive struggles have been about as of late he just won't see any fastballs lately Two and one. Lopez busy for Cleveland. Kyle Crockett, the left hander. Exactly efficient. Laboring. <laughs> he chases another breaking ball. And once again, the Diamondbacks strand two, but this time they get two, and now it's a one run ball game through four. about 2.30 or so and I saw something that was just I couldn't have seen or asked for a better sight. Daniel Hudson on the mound here at Chase Field throwing to Mark Trumbo. How about that? Oh, two guys that uh, we would welcome back with open arms the sooner the better. And look at the giddy up that Huddy's got here. And you know he's a process they shot him down for a while recently part of the rehab and the comeback process. There's a schedule there. And Mark Trumbo was uh, taking some live hitting against Daniel Hudson. He was also taking some batting practice and some shagging out in left field, shagging fly balls in the outfield, running around on that foot, which was great to see. And boy, have they missed both of those guys. So a very encouraging sight earlier today. Michael Brantley leads off the fifth. It's a 5 4 ball game. Diamondbacks have out hit the Indians seven to six, but the D-backs have stranded seven so far through four. Michael Brantley, a guy Terry Francona says he is watching become one of the better players in the game. And Tito says whether it's two out. Hits, hitting for average, hitting for power, gold glove defense. This guy has done it all. Now he draws a leadoff off. Here's Daniel Hudson talking about throwing to Mark Trumbo earlier today. It felt good to get back out there. Got the first time in a year somebody's tried to actually hit the ball off me, so it um, felt good to get out there and get some juices going. Great news for Huddy. 
And Mark Trumbo continues to look better and better. Carlos Santana. Santana's got a walk and a single. He scored a run. How much have they missed Mark Trumbo? 21 games in left field for Mark. Before he got hurt, he had hit seven home runs. In the 58 games that he has missed, all other D-backs left fielders have combined for two home runs. Talk about production or a particular position on the field that profiles as a production spot. Corner outfield certainly do. Diamondbacks have missed Trumbo. Santana aboard for the third time tonight. And once again, Wade Miley in immediate trouble. First two have reached in the fifth. Right, and you get the feeling Wade Miley is not long for this ball game as Joe Thatcher begins to crank it up in that Diamondbacks bullpen. I mean, at some point you've got to stop the other offense. You get the feeling the Diamondbacks are going to score against Justin Masterson. They've hit him hard in this ball game, but Wade Miley starts his fifth inning with a walk and then an 0-2 base hit to Carlos Santana. Jason Kipnis shows bunt did not go around says Bill Miller third so it's one and up. Just as Masterson has done Miley has labored here. Kipnis singled and scored in the second reached on an error his last time up. Second inning in the ball game that Wade Miley started an inning with a base on ball. Same thing could be said for Justin Masterson back in the first and the second. Hard hit to center. They'll stop Brantley at third, and the Indians have the bases loaded with nobody out. Location. Kirk Gibson. I think he's already made the call to the bullpen. Indians have the base. His last 13 starts, his ERA during that span, 476. He survives only four plus here tonight and leaves Joe Thatcher a bases loaded, no out mess here in the fifth. See the numbers for Thatcher this season. One thing uh, a little puzzling for Wade Miley, he's been striking out a lot of batters recently. 41 over his last five starts, only three in the ball game tonight, and one of those was the opposing pitcher. So they go to Thatcher here with Jan Gomes, the right hand hitter, stepping in. But you've got 
Lonnie Chisenhall from the left side on deck and Chisenhall has been one of their best hitters. So Thatcher will work to Gomes the base is full and nobody out. Gomes has driven in two so far tonight singled and scored in the second sacrifice fly his last time up. And this is a guy who hits left hand pitching well 310 versus lefties this year. Thatcher jumps ahead 0 and 2. Hitting 373 as a team with the bases full the best in baseball. Brantley is the runner at third Santana at second and Kipnis at first. That number with the bases loaded would even be better uh, were it not for Jan Gomes one for ten with the bases loaded this season. Let's go for one for eleven. Iggy had to range way out there to get that one. It's two and two. The iron lefty Joe Thatcher. Got him. Big strike out there. One down. And now he'll work to Chisenhall. Third baseman, Lonnie Chisenhall. Well, you rarely say that Joe Thatcher just threw a fastball by an opposing hitter, but that's exactly what happened right there to Gomes. Just a belt high fastball, middle part of the plate. Threw it right by him at 86. Chisenhall was a guy who Terry Francona earlier this year limited to facing mainly right hand pitchers because of his poor career track record against lefties but Chisenhall has come a long way against left handers this year so that is uh, no longer a necessity. Oh and two. Having seen a lot of Lonnie Chisholm Holly and we've talked a lot about Miggy and Gerardo Parr and some of the other hitters around baseball who have simplified their approach at the plate. But I'm not sure if that's the case for Chisholm Hall or whether this is the way he's always hit but he's very still up there not a lot of moving parts. High in the air short left center. Didi wants it. And that's a huge out number two. You've got the right hand hitting Ryan Rayburn coming up. Right fielder Ryan Rayburn. That breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, kind of a defensive swing that time by Chisholm Hall, just trying to goose it into play somewhere on the left side of the infield. We got underneath it, popped it up. Joe Thatcher trying to be a miracle worker here came into a bases loaded no out jam struck out the righty Gomes got the big out they really wanted in Chisenhall. And now we'll try and get one more here in Rayburn. There's the strike on one. Remember, this is a guy Rayburn hitting only a buck ninety five against lefties this year. He's nearly 40 points better. Against right hand pitching. In the air. Shallow right. Aaron Hill. 
Joe Thatcher, the iron lefty, works out of the bases loaded, no out jam, and keeps it a one run ball game. Up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Tonight's contestant took home a Paul Goldschmidt autograph game piece. How about the job done there by Joe Thatcher? Bases loaded, no outs. He got Gomes, Chisholm, Hall, and Rayburn, two right hand hitters, and kept it a one run ball game. Proved to be the difference maker tonight right there. Big zero to get right there. I mentioned it uh, during that half inning. You get the feeling the Diamondbacks offensively are, are going to continue to have opportunities against Justin Masterson, but you got to find a way to slow down this Indians offense. Nice job by Joe Thatcher. Masterson has thrown 45 strikes and 42 balls. Prado leads off the fifth. He got hit his last time. Oh, that one's up and in. Martin Prado, a critical bat to this D backs lineup. In games, the Diamondbacks win this year. He's hitting 349. In games, they lose. He's hitting 218. Once again, Justin Masterson starts out throwing balls. He walked in Ciarte to lead off the first. He walked Peralta to lead off the second. He walked Miley with one out in the fourth. And now he has walked Prado to lead off the fifth. Second in the majors in bases on balls. No swing that time on a 3 0 count, but the Diamondbacks. Uh... Historically, have been one of the more aggressive teams on 3 0 counts. 2010, 2011, 2012. They led the majors before dropping to sixth in the National League last year. Ten times this season, they've swung at a 3 0 pitch. And we're going to have a double switch here by Terry Francona as Murphy will go out to right and replace Rayburn. Masterson will leave after walking Prado to open up the inning. We are already deep into the bullpens in the fifth. It's a one run ball game.
Hasn't been seven, the cleanest eight, game eight, ever, but certainly eight, entertaining. Eight, and now Terry eight, Francona, eight, the American eight, League skipper. Of course, they used to manage in Philadelphia, so double switches are nothing new. David Murphy takes over. In right field, replacing Ryan Rayburn. And the new pitcher for the Indians on for the 10th time this year is Kyle Crockett. This kid was a fourth-round draft pick last year out of the University of Virginia. He's a UVA Wahoo. And he's on to face the left-hand hitting David Peralta after Justin Masterson walked Martin Prado to lead off the fifth. So Murphy will hit in the nine spot for Cleveland. Pitcher spot is now the eight hole. Peralta walked and scored back in the second. He's 0 for 1. And just like Justin Masterson, Crockett having issues throwing strikes. Three and oh. It was last time Peralta had a three ball count on him. And he popped up with two outs and a runner on. Looks at a strike there, three and one. Yeah, looking at the uh, Indians media guy, Kyle Crockett, uh, was voted by Baseball America as having the best control among all tribe minor league hurlers. <laughs> Not so much here <laughs> to start his outing against the Diamondbacks, falling behind 3 0 before pumping that first strike in there. Oh, my. Mike Everett. Three and two. Jason Kipnis, Prado heads for third. Great effort there by the Indian second baseman, but the Diamondbacks now have first and third. Nobody out. That missed call on the 3-1 pitch ended up helping the Diamondbacks ultimately as that ball gets through into center field. Martin Prado turns the corner and ends up at third base. Had we taken the base on balls, it would have been first and second instead of first and third. Just out of the reach of Jason Kipnis up the middle. So Prado's at third, Peralta at first. Nobody out for Didi Gregorius. Didi singled in the second. He's one for two. Gets down the bump. Kipnis will get the out at first, and the Diamondbacks have tied the ball game. You know, I'm a big fan of that play. The old safety squeeze. It looked more like Didi just trying to punt his way on base against the tough lefty, but. Got it down on the right side of the infield. Not only does he get the tying run on the plate, he moves the go ahead run into scoring position. Kirk Gibson out there to talk to Chad Fairchild, the first base umpire, but it appears there will be no challenge. And now you've got the pitcher spot up for the Diamondbacks, and Cody Ross will step in here. Sacrifice for three and an RBI for Didi. And here's Cody. 
222 on the year. He said safely in 10 of his last 15 games, six of them starts. Strike one. Is a guy that has always hit lefties very well. Last year, better than 390 against left hand pitching. His bat has come around as of late. 11 hits in his last 28 at bats. Go ahead and run on second, one out. One and two now. Behind the bag, throws out Ross Peralta to third. And that'll bring up Ender and Ciarte. Go ahead, run at third, two down. Been up there three times. He has reached all three times as the leadoff man. Walked and scored in the first. An RBI single in the second. A beautiful bunt single his last time up. Owen one. One base hit away from the lead and from Tacos. I like the way you think. I can't take all the credit. Ender counting tonight has now hit safely in 15 of his last 19 games. Green one. Nearly gets Ender in Ciarte. Tailing fastball off that inside part of the plate, way off the inside part of the plate. In the air to center, playable for Michael Bourne. But the Diamondbacks get one, they tie it up, and through five, it's 5 5. Here it changes.
Turned in tonight by our APS Energy All-Star, the iron lefty Joe Thatcher, for the first time in his career. Joe tonight escaped an inherited bases loaded situation by recording all three outs without allowing a run. How about that. Two of them right handed hitters. One of them a real tough lefty in Lonnie Chisenhall. Great job by Joe Thatcher tonight. And it was an enormous three outs for the Diamondbacks that kept it a 5 4 ball game. They're able to get the tying run in the home half of the fifth. So it's 5 5 into the sixth we go. And here is the left hander. Oliver Perez on for the 34th time this year. And it has been a nice pickup for Kevin Towers, a 2-4-8 ERA on the year. And in his last 17 games, his ERA is .6. Not bad. Right field has been really good lately, and you get the feeling Kirk Gibson would probably like to get multiple innings out of Ollie Perez in this ball game tonight. A lot of left-handed bats and switch hitters in this Indians lineup. Of course, Joe Thatcher's already been in and out of this ball game. Perez, the only other lefty available, so you might see him go a couple innings in this ball game tonight. Well, this is David Murphy. His first appearance at the plate was double switched into the ball game for Rayburn in right field, hitting in the ninth spot. He'll lead off the sixth. And slumping right now, Murphy two for his last 35. Strike one. His average for the year has dropped about 35 points over the last 10 games. He is really scuffling. And you probably remember David Murphy parts of seven seasons with the Texas Rangers. At 275 while he was in Texas, a good player for them, usually 12 to 15 homers a season. Pretty steady guy out there. Numbers a little bit skewed because of the ballpark there in Arlington, and especially Great. for a left handed hitter using that wind tunnel to right field. And as we said, make it now two for his last 36. Perez starts off with a strikeout, one down. Yeah, that's a great left hand hitters park, Texas. Mm -hmm. Center fielder. Persistent wind that blows out to right center and right field every night. Michael Bourne, the leadoff man, one for three, a single his last time up. Strike one from Oliver Perez. Born struggling lately, hitting only 195 last 17 games. And that's without an extra base hit. His batting average this month has really dropped. And of course, he was a two time All Star, two time Gold Glove winner. The Phillies, the Astros, and the Braves here in a four year, $48 million free agent deal with Cleveland. And hitting barely 200 versus left hand pitching this year. One or two. Sounded like a broken bat. Yeah, he's going to need a new one here. Fans, FoxSportsArizona.com, all the online. Local sports coverage can't find anywhere else. Jack McGruder re-examines the Trevor Bauer deal. Of course, he's now with Cleveland. Randy Hill explores free agency options for Channing Fry in post-game analysis and reaction from the Diamondback Clubhouse. Trevor Bauer, a hot topic of discussion in Terry Francona's pre-game media session. Former Diamondback draft pick. Two and two. And you can read all about that at FoxSportsArizona.com after the ball game. Three and two.
Well, after that last swing by Michael Bourne, Ender Inciarte moved even a few more steps over toward the gap in left center field, figuring that Bourne's just going to try to battle against Oliver Perez. Probably is going to hit the ball the other way. Called strike three. Two strikeouts for Ali Perez here in the sixth. Just missed with a breaking ball inside earlier in the sequence. Makes a little Good bit shot. of an adjustment. Drops that right in there for a called strike three. Well, the Diamondbacks have had only one one two three inning in the ball game so far. That was the first when Miley got Bourne, Cabrera, and Brantley. Now Perez with two strikeouts in the six works to his Drupal Cabrera. Strike one. As Drupal 0 for 3. You see all the different deliveries from Ali Perez and Louis Tion turn your back to the hitter. Occasionally he'll quick pitch. Other times he'll use a high leg kick. Sometimes he'll use a slide step. But behind it all, he's throwing in the low to mid 90s. He's got a good fastball this year. It's one of the things Kevin Towers talked about when they signed him the idea that you could have a power arm from the left hand side to complement some of the other. Left hand pitchers and Oliver Perez in the six strikes out the side in order. A tremendous night so far for the D backs bullpen. CenturyLink, your link to what's next coming up. It's Para Goldsmith and Montero. Brought to you in part by Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. Back, back here at Chase Field. Diamondbacks in a ball game. They trailed 4-1 and 5-2. Have battled back to tie it up 5-5. And we're set for the home half of the sixth. The Ronald Parr leads it off. Kyle Crockett back in there. If only they had a reliever named Tubbs. Oh. Welcome. Out there on Lake Erie in their speedboat. <laughs> sure, fighting crime. <laughs> <laughs> in white sport coats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see that. See if we can schedule a pitch meeting with somebody. Be back season ticket holders. I, th that's an original look. I usually guys paint their faces or do all kinds of things. Those guys have their own thing going. There's a nice looking lid. Looks like they all rode here on Harley's too.
Kind of a ZZ top feel to things. Jack swing base hit for Parra. Excuse me as it rolls in the left. And Parra has three hits tonight. He's three for four. And a guy that was four for his last 33 coming in gets his third hit tonight. Oops. Oh, as ecstatic as Gerardo Parra and the Diamondbacks are, the uh, Indians and Kyle Crockett, not quite so crazy about that check swing base hit. Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie has twice reached on a fielder's choice, once for an RBI. And as he becomes a genuine force as a major league hitter, opposing pitchers are backing off on Goldie, trying to make it tougher and tougher for him to hit. And one trend that's shown up over the first three months of this year, he's seeing, much like Aaron Hill, fewer and fewer fastballs. And at the beginning of this year, Goldie was getting uh, fastballs about 70% of the time. That number is now down to barely 60%. More and more breaking balls. Once again, saw a note on Kyle Crockett in the Indians media guide. You mentioned he was the fourth round selection by the Indians in the 2013 draft. And last year, in his brief stint in the minor leagues, he gave up a home run on July 29th, pitching for Lake County. It was the First home run he'd given up since he was a freshman in college. Huh. And Virginia. It was the only earned run he gave up in his minor league career as a member of the Indians. Well, he certainly has fast tracked his way to the big leagues after getting drafted last year. Rock, paper, scissors. One and two to Goldie. No breaking ball in the dirt. Two and two. Mentioned all the breaking balls and on-speed pitches that Goldie is seeing now. He's laying off more and more of them. Walked five times over the weekend. The on base percentage on the way up. He's already walked 19 times this month, walked 10 times all of last month. So his on base percentage in June is over 470. Now back in the top 10 in the league. Drives that into center for a base hit. Pair of D-back singles open up the sixth. Right back toward Kyle Clark at that time. I'm talking about top spin line drives. That was a perfect example. That ball got by the mound and looked like a hard curve ball. Just went down, hit the dirt one time before skipping into center field. Clean line drive single. Miguel Montero having a pretty good night. RBI double in the first. And an RBI single his last time up. Love the approach on both of them. Pitches down and out over the plate. He stayed right on him, hitting the opposite way. It's so easy when Miguel Montero stays on those pitches from the middle of the plate away and does exactly what he's done tonight. Just be content to take your base hits to the opposite field, especially with runners in scoring position. And you see that RBI total right there, 43. Now one more than he had all of last season. John Gomes does a good job back there defensively. Keeps that in front, 1-0. And, and Crockett, much like Justin Masterson, is right about 50-50 balls and strikes. 27 pitches, only 15 for strikes.
Ronald Parr takes off for third. They got him hung up. He's safe. They missed the tag. Vic Carapazzo, the second base umpire. Here comes Tito. And remember, Cleveland has already lost its challenge. Just takes off on first movement, and uh, Crockett went with that inside move to second base. Wow, the Diamondbacks may have got a huge break right there. Vic Carapazzo was kind of screened by as Drupal Cabrera's body. Yeah, right there, Parra makes contact with as Drupal Cabrera. The obstruction on the uh, on the defender. You can't tell definitively from that angle whether he touched him or not. Once again, from the angle that he had, I don't think Vic Carapazza could really see if there was a tag or not. I'll try a different angle here. Still can't tell for sure. So even if Terry Francona had a challenge, which he does not. From what we've seen, there is no definitive angle that provides clear and convincing evidence. So the Diamondbacks dodge a bullet there. One and one now on Montero. Yeah, very fortunate for Parra and the Diamondbacks. I mean, where's he going right there? It's the go ahead run. Yeah, you don't want to make the first out at third base, especially with one of your hotter hitters, Miguel Montero. I think, granted, Aaron Hill has struggled tonight, but uh, man, you cannot afford to make that out. Initially, I thought maybe the Indians had baited him into trying to run for third base. Occasionally, what you'll do is split your middle infielders wide apart. And as that runner takes his lead off second base, he looks over his shoulder. He sees the shortstop's way back. He sees the second baseman is way back. And you have thoughts about trying to steal the base. And then you use that inside move from the pitcher's mound, and it catches a lot of guys thinking they can run. Two and two. Santana knocks it down at first. Nice play. Crockett covers and the runners advance. And almost snuck by into right field, but a nice play there by a guy who has been a catcher and a third baseman. And is still learning his craft over there at first. Now batting second baseman, Aaron Hill. Santana ranging to his right here. A couple steps and a dive. Crockett does his job, gets over there to cover the bag. And now with the right hand hitting Aaron Hill coming up. Terry Francona will go to his bullpen. Diamondbacks with a one out here in the sixth. Now the go-ahead runs aboard. Back after this.
Feedback player for a day will hurry to participating Circle K locations. Purchase any two 28 ounce Gatorade or GW thirst quenchers and receive a text code and keyword on your receipt. Winners attend batting practice, get a customized jersey, go on a Chase Field tour, and much more. The offer ends July 14th. Gatorade win from within. Second and third for the D backs, one out in tie ball game. New pitcher for the tribe, the right hander Vinny Pastano. This is his third appearance since his recall from AAA Columbus. He spent most of the year down there, worked in 25 games, and had a 178 ERA after leaving spring training with the club. Got sent down April 9th. First pitch from Aaron Hill is laced in the center, and the Diamondbacks take the lead. RBI 39 for Aaron Hill, and it's 6 5 D backs. Oh, what a crazy game. Aaron Hill struck out twice in his first three at bats in this ball game tonight on sliders low and away. Pistano comes in the game, throws him a slider low and away, and he gets an RBI base hit up the middle of the field. Third D backs hit of the inning. They take a 6 5 lead, and now they're on the corner, still only one out. Martin Prano walked and scored his last time up. He's also been hit by a pitch. Tacos. You, you said it. <laughs> Denise Pestano, when he first came up with Cleveland 2011 2012, was one of their key guys in the bullpen, a workhorse. Pitched in 67 games one year, 70 games the next year. Was on Team USA in the World Baseball Classic, training at Salt River Fields last spring. And just kind of lost the handle. Got sent down to the minors last year. And they spent most of this year with AAA Columbus. Trying to find it again. 0 and 1. How about Aaron Hill? He's now 10 for his last 25. That's a 400 batting average with runners in scoring position. I mentioned a couple of ugly at bats earlier in the ball game on the same pitch. He just lined into center field. And those two sliders that he struck out on a great example of what has been going on with Aaron lately just chasing those balls as they dive down and away out of the strike zone. But they got a hold of one there. And the D-backs who trailed in this ball game 4-1 and 5-2 now lead it 6-5. 0-2 on Martin Prado. Good emergency swing right there. That ball was nearly by him. But he stuck the bat out there. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. Prado's hit safely in five of his last six. Two misses. Chases one out of the zone for the strikeout, two down. Second time tonight, Prado was struck out. And Terry Francona now must have a left hander ready for David Peralta.
lead still threatening here in the home half of the sixth. An adventure for Gerardo Parra out there on the bases somehow avoided running into it out. It's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. That was a bad play but turned into a cool play when he's able to make it back safely to second base and later come around to score on the Aaron Hill base hit into center field. And that has proven to be the go ahead run the difference so far for the D backs and now on to face the left hand hitting David Peralta. The veteran lefty known as Scrabble Mark Sepchinski. Used to get some big outs in the postseason for the St. Louis Cardinals now. Here in his second season in Cleveland. I want to Peralta walked and scored in the second and a single his last time up one for two. Paul Goldschmidt is the runner at third Aaron Hill at first a run in here in the sixth. On the ground to Kipnis at second. Once again D back strand two but they get one to take a six five lead. out there for the seventh after striking out the side in order in the sixth bullpen has been outstanding for the D backs today. Yeah, the two lefties that have trotted in out of that Diamondbacks bullpen have really done a nice job in this game. Joe Thatcher pitching out of a bases loaded nobody out jam in the fifth and then Oliver Perez making quick work of the Indians in the sixth. And now he'll face Michael Brantley to lead off the seventh. Brantley Santana Kipnis three four and five. Brantley singled and scored in the third. He walked his last time up. The full El Tiante, ball one. Michael Brantley has never hit higher than 288 as a Major League Baseball regular. Never slugged higher than 402, but this season he's slugging 520. Top 10 in the American League in RBIs, top 10 in doubles, hitting 325 on the year. And really emerging. He's kind of like their A.J. Pollock, a guy that does everything well, has been kind of under the radar lately, and is having a breakthrough season. Two and one.
There's the strike two and two. Brantley doing much of his damage against right hand pitching this year. 344 against righties. And only three of his 11 homers this year have come against left hand pitchers. Two twos laced right to Aaron Hill one away. Term scouts use a lot of high ceiling. I think uh, Michael Brantley's one of those guys. He's put up respectable numbers in his major league Third career, but I think this year you're starting to see uh, him approach that ceiling, hitting for much more power this year. Tough at bat against a tough lefty right there. He managed to hang in and ultimately hit a line drive for an out. But uh, Michael Brantley's going to be one of those guys, like you said, like A.J. Pollock, who just kind of improves a little bit every year until suddenly that light goes off and he becomes one of the premier players in the game. Carlos Santana has reached base three times tonight, a walk, a pair of singles. Field gap Santana will head for second. And he's in there with his tenth double. Carlos Santana, three for three with a walk. Second baseman, Jason He may not hit for much of an average, but he doesn't get cheated. When he makes contact, that ball makes a real distinctive sound coming off his bat. Just over the head of Didi Gregorius and all the way to the wall out there in left center field. That reminds you a little bit of uh, Pablo Sandoval with that yep. high leg kick, real aggressive approach to the ball as it gets into the hitting zone. Well, Santana over his last 20 games hitting better than 330. And he's three for three tonight with a walk. Here's Kipnis. He's got a pair of hits. When you watch Kipna stand in there and he kind of straightens out that bat and stops pointing at it, his stance looks a lot like Roger Kishnick. It's a little oddity here. He starts with that flat bat and then gradually raises it up into a more traditional hitting position. That does look a lot like Roger the K. Here's the 0 2. Play on at second. Santana's back in time. Kipnis a single in the second, a single in the fifth. There's the strikeout. That's four for Oliver Perez. Two down in the seventh. About the velocity on the Ollie Perez fastball this year, but uh, this time Kipnis got a steady diet of that slider, sweeping away from him, just couldn't come up with it. And Kirk Gibson applauding as he walks to the mound. He's going to make the move here with a right hand hitting Jan Gomes coming up. And we'll see if the D backs bullpen can continue its outstanding job tonight at 6 5.
Fans, Fox Sports Arizona Fan Express presented by Cox Communications and Fry's Food Stores is set to take you to a D-backs game. Stop by this month's participating Fry's Food Store in Globe and you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus to a D-backs game here on July 20th. All the info you need this is at FoxSportsArizona.com. What a night by the Diamondback bullpen. Joel Thatcher got out of a bases loaded no out jam. Oliver Perez retired five of the six he faced with four strikeouts. And now on to try and get this final out here in the seventh is rookie right-hander Evan Marshall. He'll work to the Indians catcher Jan Gomes. Carlos Santana. The tying run at second, two outs. Gomes and RBI single. He scored a run in the second. Drove in a run with a sack fly in the third. He struck out his last time up against Thatcher. Two and zero. Oh. Mike Sarbaugh coaching a third for Cleveland. Sandy Alomar is their first base coach. Two and one to Jan Gomes. Chopped to third. Prado charges. And the D-backs bullpen continues rolling along. It's 6-5 here at Chase. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Speaking of outstanding relief work. Former Indians great Joe Borowski joins us. Diamondbacks lead the Indians 6-5 and D.D. Gregorius will lead it off for Arizona. D.D. is single in the second. And a sacrifice RBI his last time up. Joe Borowski is with us in the booth. How about this D-back bullpen tonight? Oh, just what they needed, especially after Wade Miley struggled for the bullpen to come in and do what they did. You couldn't ask for more. I mean, Joe Thatcher comes in, bases loaded, no outs. Wow. That's 
for me, that's one of the most difficult positions to be in because any type of fly ball in the outfield, anything can score a run. And, and for him to come in, that right there is the deciding factor in this game. Just huge. And then Oliver Perez, all those strikeouts, two innings, Another almost two fantastic full. job. And and it's you're asking a lot of you both when you're asking them to come in in the fifth inning. And they and so far they've done a fantastic job. They just need to keep going. Hopefully the offense can score a couple more runs, give the give the, the bullpen a little cushion. Any clue as to what's going on with Wade Miley? It just seemed like his ball was real flat today. You know, you, you saw his last outing, and, and he had that real good break on his slider. And for me, that second inning, he made a couple good pitches that guys went down and just got. That that triple that Chisholm Hall hit, that was a good pitch. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes those things happen. you got to tip your cap to them. But other than other than those two pitches where they made, where they found holes, I just thought his ball was just a little flat today. One and two on Didi. Funny is that slider was uh, working great last time, huh? Yeah, and he threw a couple of good ones early in the ball game today, but uh, in that second inning, everything just seemed to desert him. Surrounded by great Indians pitchers up here, Tom Candiani on the radio side, <laughs> Joe Borowski here with us. Bob grew up an Indians fan in Coshocton, Ohio. He gets that in the air to center, but right to board. And Roger Kieschnick will come in and hit for the pitcher. What's it like to play baseball in Cleveland? I love the stadium. Stadium, not for, to the new for one. Me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not the old well, one. That's for sure. <laughs> <Just clarifying. laughs> Progressive Field. It was a really good place to play. Uh, the fans. When, when we went on our, our streak in, in 2007, and it looked like we uh, we were going to be contending for the playoffs, they started coming out in droves and. That, that's the atmosphere you love playing in front of, and uh, they really support us great. Unfortunately, up three games to one against uh, Josh Boston, Josh we, just, uh, we just couldn't uh, seal the deal and, and, and get to the World Series. I remember that game, Beckett pitch game five oh, yeah. at Cleveland. Yep. When uh, the Tribe was up three games to one, that was uh, one of the most impressive games yeah. I've ever seen a guy pitch. That was when, when he needed to, he stepped up and uh, completely shut down our offense. And, if I'm not mistaken, that's right around the same time that uh, Dustin Pedroia and Manny Ramirez started mm -hmm. get a, getting a little bit hot, and uh, they kind of took over the series from there. <laughs> well, as far as this year's Indians team goes, I, I think we're seeing a, an approach that uh, a lot of American League teams try to use against them. Load up on lefties. I mean, Miley was the starter. It was his day to pitch, so you got a lefty starting, but then the first two guys out of the bullpen are both left-handers to get out of some tough jams. Indians loaded with left handed hitters and switch hitters who are much better as left handers. So I think a lot of American League teams, should the Indians hang around that central race, uh, they're going to see a lot of left handed pitching in the second half of the season. It's been an issue for Terry Francona and his bench coach Brad Mills over there. Well, they're hitting about 25 points lower against left handed pitching this season than they are against righties, which you would expect with the lineup that they have. And there's only Bob so much he can do, right? Yeah. Most of the pitching you're going to face over the course of a season is right-handed. So generally you like a, lo a lineup loaded with lefties and switch hitters. But uh, when you struggle against lefties the way the Indians do, uh, eventually teams start to figure it out. You may even make some tweaks to your rotation going into a series against the Indians to make sure you have lefties lined up against them. Enciarte slaps it the other way, and he's on board for the fourth time tonight. Ender Enciarte, three singles and a walk in the leadoff spot. That'll work. For that opposite field approach, it served Miggy and Gerardo Parra well at times, and Enciarte just stays on a ball up and out over the plate, lines it to left field. A little cat and mouse, I would assume, between a left handed pitcher and a potential base stealer on over at first base with two outs in the inning. Probably see a few pickoff moves, maybe even a pitch out. And it's funny, the Diamondbacks have kind of stacked their lineup. They have five uh, lefties in the lineup tonight. And here's another one, Gerardo Parra. Parra, who has really been scuffling lately, having a terrific night tonight, three for four.
mean, when you sit down there in your office as a manager in the afternoon, you're trying to figure out the best lineup on a given night. Uh, obviously, you hope the guys at the top of the order do their job and get on base, but you can't ask much more out of Inciarte and Parra than they've done tonight. And the D-backs now have 12 hits. The only starter for Arizona who does not have a base hit is Martin Prado. And he's been on base twice, hit by a pitch in a walk. He scored a run. D-backs have 12 hits. They have stranded 10. Six of the 12 hits have come to the first two hitters in the lineup. And see Arte and Parra. That'll work. Especially when you've got Goldie and Miggy and guys like that behind them. Mm -hmm. Lifted in the air, left center field, slicing away from Bourne, and he won't get there, and one hops the wall. And Enciarte will have to go back to third. That time, the break went against the D-backs. But Gerardo Parra's got a four-hit night. Came into the ball game four for 33. And he's four for five tonight. Boy, opposite field, opposite field. You got to love that for the Diamondbacks left handed hitters in this game. They're taking what the Cleveland Indians pitching staff has given them. Throwing everything middle of the plate away. And those lefties just going with it to the opposite field. Well, now you know, keep in mind you've got a left hand pitcher out there in Zepchinski. First base is open. You've got a left hand hitter in Miguel Montero coming up behind Paul Goldschmidt. I don't even understand why you need yeah. a meeting to talk yeah, about that's, this. <laughs> this is no doesn't seem that complicated. No, it doesn't. Baseman, Number one, it takes a bat out of Goldie's hands if you walk him intentionally. Number two, it loads the bases with two outs. You have a force play anywhere on the infield if you happen to hit a ball in the hole or up the middle where you can't make a play at first. And it gets you the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup with Montero. Top of the order for the D-backs, seven for nine. And they will indeed put Paul Goldschmidt on. That one almost got away from Jan Gomes. How, Joe, how hard is it to do this? It's extremely difficult I, because... I bet it is. You have to remember, you're throwing and you're going max effort. Now all of a sudden, what you do most times is you try to take off some and just lay it in there. And your arm is just used to going at, at, at full speed, and now you're trying to take some off. It's not that easy to find that release point. That's why your best bet is just to try and throw it just as close as you are when you're going and you're throwing to him as a hitter. Just just throw the ball. And especially with a guy on third, you know, you know, one bad one, and it's disaster. Sure. So the bases are loaded for the D-backs with two outs, and here comes Miguel Montero. Miggy already with a pair of hits tonight. An RBI double in the first, RBI single in the fourth. He's two for four. This is where the Diamondbacks need to cash it in. You know, they left so many guys on base tonight. A big hit in the gap right here blew this game wide open for them. Ten left on board so far for Arizona. Boy, and Miggy's at bat in the fourth inning against Masterson. And I thought that was a, one of his best at bats of the season. Masterson missed inside three times in a row, tried to throw a pitch out over the plate, and Miggy lined it to left center. Ball one. So many times when a hitter gets himself in those favorable counts, you get a little bit pull crazy. You've got the count in your favor. You think the pitcher has to throw you a strike in this situation, and you want to pull it hard. And do some damage, hit an extra base hit, hit it in the gap, hit it out of the ballpark. But instead, Mickey just stayed with his swing and lined at the left center. A little dribbler up the line is foul. A single by NCRT, a double by Parra, an intentional walk to Goldie, all with two outs. And now a 1 1 count on Miguel Montero. D backs tonight, 5 for 18 with runners in scoring position. at second and the Diamondbacks will leave them loaded Joe will see you on Diamondbacks live after the ball game looking forward to it guys
Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. Well, the Diamondbacks' bullpen has been stellar tonight. And now the fourth D-backs reliever is on to open up the eighth. It's Brad Ziegler. And he'll work to Lonnie Chisenhall, the pitcher spot, and Murphy, 7-8-9. Because of the job the lefties did in the middle of this ball game, I'm talking about Thatcher and uh, Oliver Perez. It really set it up well for the final three innings of this game, the way Gibby likes to play it. Marshall to Ziegler to Reed. The lefties able to put those zeros on the board, give the offense a chance to get back in the ball game and take the lead. Ziegler will work to Chisenhall. Pitcher spot after the double switch is up next, and Nick Swisher is in the on deck circle. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Chisholm Hall, a two run triple. He scored a run in the second, one for three. I don't think he's picking the ball up against Brad Ziegler too well. Well, he shouldn't feel like the Lone Ranger. Not too many guys do pick it up well against Brad Ziegler. Maybe can't quite hold on. Chisenhall looks like he's blindfolded up there. That caught Mike Everett back there. One or two. Got him. And now here comes. Switch hitting Nick Swisher. Hitting under 200 this year with five homers. One of those home runs however. This walk off grand slam last week. That beat the Angels in the 10th inning in Cleveland. Pitch hitter for Mark Zepchinski. Number 33 Nick Swisher. The Ohio State Buckeye. And there's the Ohio. <laughs> Swisher really struggling right now. 198. He missed the first two weeks in June with a hyperextended left knee. First pitch swinging is smothered by Aaron Hill, who makes a terrific play. Two down. Nice 
Nice play by Aaron smothers that ball throws in plenty of time Nick Swisher does not run extremely well Aaron had plenty of time hard hit ball nice backhanded play. Great look from our terrific crew here using Fox Sports's phantom cam David Murphy. Struck out his first time against Oliver Perez. One one. Had a great play there by Aaron Hill. You've got Murphy up here. He played at Baylor. Aaron played at LSU. Murphy was drafted four spots after Toronto. Took Aaron Hill in the 2003 draft. Murphy selected by the Red Sox. Three and one. Even in limited at bats, not very many guys can brag that they've never made an out against Brad Ziegler. Mm -hmm. you know, Lonnie Chisinau is a terrific hitter, but it looks like you could have given him a hundred swings and mm -hmm. he might not have hit one against Brad. Yeah. Not an easy at bat. Well, the way Miggy reacted, it looked like that one might have got that left toe. Oh, brother, that hurts. Man. Try to run out from underneath it. It just doesn't work. Oh, man. That hurts more up here. So Mike Everett goes out to have a chat with Brad Ziggler. Oh, yeah. Give Miggy a moment. He's laughing about it. Probably lost a few toenails in his career. And Miggy's going to lose one after that one. Henry Blanco. Three and two to David Murphy. Ooh, missed with that one, and it's ball four. Just off the inside corner. Good location. Just a better take that time by David Murphy to be able to lay off that slider just off the inside corner. So Murphy the tying run at first still two outs and here's Michael Bourne the leadoff man. One for four a single in the fourth he has struck out twice. Chopper to first. Goldie will backhand it. Ziegler races to Bourne and beats him to get to the bag. And the outstanding night by the Diamondback bullpen continues. It's still a one run Arizona lead. Ziegler in a foot race with Bourne to the bag, and it's 6 5 D back.
six five home half of the eighth time now for our AT and T fan photo as selected. Well, frankly, I'm not sure who picked this one. It's so hard to tell with the Brendan committee these yeah. days. Allison. Ooh. She voted for Goldie. That's good enough. Nice Webby actually did this one by text message, so we'll give him credit for this one too. He's on a roll, right on the cutting edge of technology. Thanks to all of you who tweeted us your fan photos using the hashtag AZFanPhoto. Brought to you by AT&T. New pitcher for Cleveland, the veteran Scott Atchison. Aaron Hill leads off the eighth. A big RBI single his last time up. Got Atchison out there at the age of 38. He was a 49th round draft pick by Seattle back in 1998. Pitch for the Mariners, the Giants, the Red Sox for three years. Last year was with the Mets, pitched in 50 games for New York. And this year with Cleveland. That's well hit left center field, but playable for Boone. It seems kind of odd as long as Atchison has been around. Uh, the Diamondback with the most at bats isn't even available. Cliff Pennington has seen him seven times. Nobody else has had more than two at bats against Scott Atchison in their careers. Third baseman, Martin Prado. Martin Prado, the only D backs starter without a hit, but he's been on base twice. Hit by a pitch, a walk, he scored a run. Diamondbacks have out hit Cleveland 13 to 9, but Arizona has also stranded 13 base runners. And what is still a one run ball game? Single. It looked like the same pitch that Atchison started the sequence with a big rolling curve ball. That one stayed up over the heart of the plate for Martin. Nice Left swing field. this time from our Phantom Cam. Barrels it up back up the middle of the field. One out base runner for Peralta. Who walked and scored in the second, singled in the fifth. He's one for three. Addison Reed warming for the Diamondbacks in the bullpen. And remember, Addison Reed, two years as the White Sox closer. He's a guy that Cleveland in the AL Central has seen a lot of. One on one. Sanderson Ford bullpen Addison Reed is ready. Yeah, just kind of pitching along with the inning here one out runner at first base obviously uh, you could see a ground ball double play and the inning quickly come to an end but uh, hopefully that won't happen. Right. Nice work. Goodness Cabrera they roll it. So. We will head to the ninth. It's six five and Addison Reed is coming in.
Our Gila River game summary. It's been an outstanding night for the Diamondback bullpen after Wade Miley struggled. D-backs trailed this ball game 4-1 and 5-2. And now they lead it 6-5 here in the ninth. And so far, Diamondback relievers have worked four innings in the ball game, given up just one hit with six strikeouts. And on to close it out for the 33rd time this year, the closer, Addison Reed. You mentioned this Indians ball club being in that uh, American League Central where Addison Reed pitched for the Chicago White Sox. They've seen him a little bit. See whose advantage that works out to here tonight. Cabrera, Bradley, Santana, 2 3 and 4 in the Cleveland ninth. As Drupal Cabrera 0 for 4, he has struck out twice. Laces that one down the right field line. But out of play. As Drupal Cabrera has seen Addison Reed before, he's got a home run. A switch hitter batting from the left hand side. That's his best side. One on one. Anderson Reed, the last time out, looked, uh, I think, the best we've seen him, right? Oh, by far the best slider we've seen from Addison Reed. He threw it uh, more often than usual and threw it with a lot of confidence. Misses there, two balls and a strike. Leadoff walk. You mentioned uh, Addison Reed's last outing. Uh, for our money, the, the most impressive he's been all season. Still had good life on his fastball, but that slider right there was devastating. Got a swing and a miss from Brandon Crawford. Same thing from the Panda, Pablo Sandoval. This was outstanding. Well, he's faced one batter so far and put the tying run aboard. And now we'll work to Michael Brantley. Brantley singled and scored in the third. He walked in the fifth. One for three so far. There's the strike on one. You see the 11 home runs. That's already a career high. Came into the ball game fourth in the American League and hitting at 325. Two and one. So far, eight pitches for Addison Reed, six balls. Two and two. And the D-backs got the benefit of the doubt here. That ball wasn't even close to the outside corner. Mike Everett, the plate umpire. 
Big swing pitch. Instead of three and one, it's now two and two. He could possibly use that slider down and in, get a swing and a miss. Hard to right, right to par. Comes up throwing. Cabrera is back in time. That ball was scorched. And Gerardo Parra, as well as the other Diamondbacks outfielders, playing in no doubles, very deep. He actually had to come in to make the catch on this line drive, and when he caught it, he was right at a position where he normally would be playing. And as long as he's got the ball going that direction, might as well try to throw behind the runner at first. Well, here's a problem. It's Carlos Santana. He has reached in all four plate appearances. A walk, two singles, and a double. He scored a run, but has never had a base hit against Addison Reed. Cabrera takes off for second, no throw. Sixth stolen base of the year for his Drupal Cabrera. Now the tying run is in scoring position with one out. Just a ginormous jump over there at first base and then the compound and a tough pitch for Miggy to handle. Ball to his left and up. Not sure if he just didn't have a good grip on that baseball or realized he had no chance to throw Cabrera out at second base. Wise move to hold on to it right there. Dirt 2 and 0. Oh. Stopped by Miggy that time on that hard slider down and in. Santana has to hopscotch over the baseball. Somehow Miggy able to shift over there and keep that ball from going to the backstop. Three balls and no strikes. Jason Kipnis is on deck. Santana, one of those guys I was talking about earlier, just about a 50 50 split strikeouts and walks this year. He's punched out 61 times, and with a walk earlier in the ballgame tonight, he's now walked 54 times on the season. Second in the majors in walks behind only Jose Bautista. There's a strike, three and one. Second walk in the inning issued by Addison Reed. And here comes Kipnis, who is two for four with a pair of hits. Mike Harkey. Kipnis singled in the second, singled in the fifth. Two walks in the inning here for Addison Reed. The leadoff walk to Cabrera, now a one out walk to Santana. Six walks all season. The first time tonight he's walked two in an outing. Looked like a little bit of a pitch around for Santana, however, even though that puts the potential go ahead run on first base, it also sets up a double play with runners at first and second. Now, you've got to deal with Jason Kipnis. That's the play from second baseman, Jason Kipnis. Kipnis two for four, a pair of singles. As Drupal Cabrera is the tying run at second. Carlos Santana, the go ahead run at first. Oh, 
Own one. You saw Miguel Montero put both hands out in front of his body and kind of like an air traffic controller guiding Addison Reed toward that strike zone. It's really tough for a guy that throws across his body as drastically as Addison Reed does to get everything going toward your target. Your natural delivery takes you off to the right and then you try to fire back against your own body toward that strike zone. Two and two. Dangerous area to a lot of left handed hitters that down and in fastball, but Kipnis just couldn't pull the trigger that time right on the inside corner. Mike Everett brings him up. So now it's two on, two outs. And here's the catcher, Jan Gomes. An RBI single in the second. He's one for three. Also drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. Put the whammy on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one and one. Those backs are trying to get everybody fired up. It drops in front. Here comes Cabrera. The throw is offline. The game is time. The leadoff walk scores the tying run. Fastball out over the plate, lined into center field. Thought Inciarte might have a play if he broke initially, but uh, didn't get a great read off the bat. Had to play it on a hop. Couldn't find the grip on the baseball. And by the time he unleashes that throw, Cabrera across the plate with the tying run. Mm. 
Two out RBI single at 6 6, and here's Chisenhall. Still some work to do here. Madison Reed has now given up a run in 15 of his 33 appearances. Chisenhall, a two run triple. He scored a run in the second, one for four. At Stites warming in the Diamondback bullpen. 0 and 2. Looks like Miggy got one on the backswing right there, right on top of the mask. Kind of pushed it down over his face a little bit. Gets the strikeout, but the Indians get the tying run and we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. It's 6 6. July 15th, baseball's Beth. Gather in Minnesota, 2014 All-Star Game. Special coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. on Fox Sports 1, followed by the game on Fox at 4.30. As Derek Jeter plays in his final All-Star Game, should be an unforgettable night. The 2014 Major League Baseball All-Star Game from Target Field in Minneapolis, July 15th on Fox. The voting holds up. Paul Goldschmidt would join Jay Bell, Matt Williams, who were both voted in by the fans in 1999, and Luis Gonzalez in 2001. New pitcher for the tribe, Cody Allen. This is a guy they like an awful lot. His 37th appearance, a 278 ERA. In his last 10 games, he's got six saves. He's gone back and forth with John Axford as the closer this year. 41 strikeouts in 32 and a third. Well, it's hitting only 212 against Cody Allen. Well, another rough one for Addison Reed. Two walks and an RBI single. And he's given up a run in 15 of his 33 appearances. And at 6 6, bottom nine, DD Gregorius will lead it off. Ninety five oh and one pitcher spot is due up next and Chris Owings is in the on deck circle. You're basically a two pitch guy is Cody Allen. You've seen the fastball in the mid nineties and he also throws a nasty curveball. Oh and two.
Diamondbacks trailed in the ball game 4-1 and 5-2. They led it 6-5. And now 6-6 in the ninth. They have out hit the Indians 14-10. D-backs have stranded 13 base runners, 10 for Cleveland. One down. Chris Owings will hit. Haven't seen CO in a while. He's had a few Nixon cuts as of late. For Addison Reed, but now he will hit for Addison Reed. 282 on the year and six homers. Chris has hit safely in six straight games and nine of his last ten batting over 350 during that span. Looking for a base runner it's 0 and 1. Yeah, for CO this is his 11th pinch hit appearance of the season which would make him the number one pinch hitter for the Indians. <laughs> American League National League <laughs> Baseball you know they just don't have to pinch hit for that pitcher spot. Diamondbacks have four guys in double digits or much more as pinch hitters. Indians are led by Ryan Rayburn with 10 pinch hit at bats on the season. He's been there DH most of the time. Mm -hmm. One and one to Owings. Does that make life easier for the American League skipper? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially with decisions on your pitcher, as long as he's pitching effectively and you feel like you have some more pitches in the tank, you just keep running him out there. You never have to worry about that nine spot coming up and making that decision. Do I let him hit for himself and send him back out there? Does he have any gas left in the tank or do we pinch hit here? Sometimes the decision is made for you. If you've got runners in scoring position, you're trailing in the game, but a lot of times that pitcher spot where it would normally be rolls around and you don't even have to give it a second thought your pitcher still getting guys out his pitch counts reasonable send him back out there it's full three and two First base side. Santana and Kipnis. It's Kipnis two down. Well, Ender Inciarte has had a terrific night in the leadoff spot. He walked and scored to open up the Diamondback first. Had an RBI single in the second. Singled and scored a run in the fourth and singled his last time up. So he's three for four with a walk as the leadoff man. He has scored twice. So Ender has now hit safely in 15 of his last 19 games. Guy throws hard. And Ender Inciarte all twisted up. Wicked curveball. He throws his fastball in the mid to upper 90s. That curveball sits in the mid to upper 80s. Throws it real hard. Harder than most guys throw their sliders.
Cody Allen is a key guy this bullpen last year. 77 appearances for Terry Frank. And six and one with a 2-4-3 ERA. Key setup guy. That one got up underneath the mask of Jan Gomes. Ooh. Teeth rattling from up here. Oh, man, right in the throat. That's why they tell you chin on chest. There's that little extension at the bottom of the mask. And if you always think about putting your chin on your chest as you're blocking a pitch in the dirt, the ball won't have a chance to get up underneath. I imagine you learn that the hard way. Yeah, you do. <laughs> two and two. Called strike three. Cody Allen works a one, two, three ninth, and we go to extras here at Chase. Jack Lynx beef jerky all season long. Jack Lynx beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Feed it. To the 10th we go here at Chase 6 6 ball game. A combined 23 base runners left on by these two teams. And now the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks, their seventh pitcher of the ball game, the right hander Randall Delgado. And he will face Mike Avilas, who will hit for the pitcher. Avilas, four for his last 30 up there. Pitcher spot is eighth in the Cleveland lineup. Two sixty on the year and three homers. High in the air along the right field line, par along run. One away, here's Murphy. Right fielder, David Murphy. Terry Francona down to one position player available off the bench. Backup catcher George Kataris, a left handed hitter. However, they do have three right handed arms available out of the bullpen still. Murphy is 0 for 1, was double switched into the ballgame midway through. He has struck out and walked. Yeah, this is, I guess, where American League teams, when they get in these types of games, really going to get jammed up. D backs have already used off their bench Cody Ross, Roger Kieschnick, and Chris Owings as pinch hitters. One and two.
Jordan Pacheco still waiting his chance. Called strike three. Two down. Well, Murphy now two for his last 37. Boy, when you see the hands move like that, yeah, you're just kind of feeling for the ball, you know you're struggling as a hitter. Every pitch looks like it's a borderline strike. You get that bat started. That time Murphy tried to check. Pitch was right on the outside corner. Michael Bourne, the leadoff man, takes strike one. Bourne, one for five, a single in the fourth. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the tenth. We'll have Para, Goldie, and Miggy, two, three, and four. Delgado looks pretty sharp to him. Two strikeouts in the inning. Delgado works a one, two, three, tenth, and Gerardo Parra will lead it off for the Diamondbacks. Backs all tied up. Don't forget, back with you tomorrow. We have uh, promised you a no hitter. Can't promise you a rose garden, but uh, according to our June 25th timeline, we've seen two no hitters on this date in Diamondback history. That'll be tomorrow. Kluber and Chase Anderson. Come on, Chase Anderson. <laughs> well, first we got to finish this one up. And on for Cleveland, it's former Diamondback Brian Shaw. Numbers this season for Brian Shaw, 38th appearance of the season, ERA under two and a half, 29 strikeouts against only eight walks this season. A lot of cutters and sliders from Brian Shaw. Well, Gerardo Parra came into the ball game with four hits in his previous 33 at bats. Tonight he's got four hits and five at bats, three singles and a double. He'll lead off the tenth. Ara Goldschmidt Montero, two, three, and four.
It's good velocity 95 on that last cutter usually a cutter you lose them a couple of miles per hour three or four miles per hour off your regular fastball but Shaw maintains his velocity with that cutter. Former second round pick by the D backs in the 08 draft out of Cal State Long Beach. Pitched here in 2011 and 2012. One and two. That was a slider that time in the low 80s. They'll get that up in the mid 80s from time to time. Last year in Cleveland worked in 70 ball games, 75 innings, 73 strikeouts. Left-handed hitter has the advantage against a right-handed pitcher, right? But with a guy that throws cutters all the time and as hard as Shaw does, that kind of equalizes things. Yeah, certainly, he can make a mistake and leave one of those cutters out over the plate. But generally, because of the movement on the ball, it's going to end up in on your hands a lot quicker than you anticipate as a left-handed hitter. Two and two. Just ask all those hitters that faced Mariano Rivera all those years in the American League. You see it, you recognize the pitch, you think you can get the barrel on it, and by the time you swing at it, it's right in on your knuckles. Right to Santana at first. One away. A chance for Goldie. Just enough movement to get this pitch off the barrel of Gerardo's bat down near the trademark turns it into a hard ground ball right to first base. That thing comes in to eat. Goldie one for four. A single and a walk. He's driven in a run. The dilemma in a situation like this for the pitcher. Clearly, you don't want to let Paul Goldschmidt beat you in the tenth. Yet you also don't want to put the winning run aboard. That cutter working away from the right-handed hitting Paul Goldschmidt. We've seen him drive that ball to the opposite field. Not one to hit right there. Is at 95, 3 and 1. The bucket's all ready. To hit just below the belt, middle of the plate, better swing that time. Just got underneath it. I mean, that was right on the barrel, just under the ball a little bit. Chases one in the dirt. Gomes completes the strikeout. Two down. Miguel Montero. RBI double in the first, RBI single in the fourth. Chance to make those tacos Miggy style mm -hmm. right here. Sounds good to me. He had that walk off 
against the Rockies here earlier this year. High, deep, and out of here to right field. I still remember him doing the post game interview with that bubblegum bucket on his head. It was a good look for Miggy. I'd like to see that again. <laughs> that was a happy flight, too. Two and one. I don't know what to make of Mike Everett strikes on tonight. Neither does Gibby. It may have been a strike, but uh, that upper quadrant, you rarely see a pitch up there called a strike. Now that one's a little different story. Down there around the knees. They're yelling from the benches. They can't both be strikes. One's high, one's low. Nail it down. Just misses there, and it's full three and two. Two down. Maybe on base for the third time tonight. And a chance now for Aaron Hill. Aaron Hill an RBI single in the sixth. One for five. See a pinch runner for Miggy if there weren't two outs in the inning. You still have Tuffy Gosowish and Jordan Pacheco available off the bench. Pacheco probably the best runner of the three. But with two outs in the inning, I don't think we're going to see him in this ballgame. Kitten is behind the bag at second and will go to the 11th. All season long, Jack Lynch beef jerky. Feed near wild side. Hit it. 11th inning at Chase Field. 6 6. Tribe and D backs. Randall Delgado worked a 1 2 3 10th. He's back out there. 
This is what happened in the ninth. As Drupal Cabrera lead off walk, he stole second. Santana a walk. After a strikeout of Kipnis, Jan Gomes, the two out single to tie the ball again. So two walks and a single against Addison Reed in the ninth. And now here we are in the 11th and Cabrera. We started that inning off. We'll start off this one against Randall Delgado. First pitch swinging. Paul Goldsmith. Delgado covers. One pitch, one out. Good start. Like to keep that pitch count down for Delgado. You don't know how long he's going to have to go in this game. Diamondbacks still have right hander Matt Stites available in the bullpen. And the pitcher spot is due up fourth in the bottom half of the 11th inning. There's Matt Stites in the Diamondback bullpen. Michael Brantley singled and scored in the third. He walked in the fifth. And Matt Stites, the only relief pitcher available at this point. Two position players, both catchers, although Pacheco can play anywhere on the field if necessary. Nationals and Brewers just finished playing 16 innings in Milwaukee. Washington won 4 2. Terry Francona's Indians. He's got his backup catcher, George Kataris, available, and two right handed relievers, including part time closer John Axford. Three and one. So now that the game is over in Milwaukee after 16, this is the last game going to the major leagues tonight. All else is final. One out walk. And the Diamondbacks have uh, yet to retire Carlos Santana tonight. Two singles, a double, a pair of walks. He has scored a run. Tribe faithful. Santana, since he came off that seven day concussion DL, and hit 333, five homers and 12 RBIs in 16 games. And he has not been retired tonight. What's the longest game you ever played in? Um, 18 innings, and that was the second game of a doubleheader. Come on. I caught nine innings in the first game, sat out in the bullpen for the first six or seven innings of game two. Jack Clark, our right fielder, got ejected. I came in to play right field, ended up going back behind the plate and catching nine innings in the second game. At Pittsburgh, rainy evening. There were about seven people in the stands, and five of them were my relatives at the end of the game, too. <laughs> Here's the 1 0. That ball is rocketed down the line in right and gone. Carlos Santana, his 12th, his fourth hit tonight. And it's an 8 6 Cleveland lead. Six plate appearances, he reached all six times. 
Well, we talked about the aggressive hacks he takes. He may be carrying a low batting average, but that is a dangerous hitter when he takes aggressive swings like that. Just a screaming line drive into the back of the Indians' bullpen down the right field line. Six homers, 14 RBIs in his last 17 games. 101 to Kipnis. D backs in the bottom of the 11th. Prado, Peralta, Gregorius, 6, 7, and 8. We were talking about that seven day concussion stint that Santana had. 50 games before that, he had six homers, 17 runs driven in. In the 16 games plus tonight since then, six homers and 14 driven in. Nearly equaled the total he had before going on that concussion DL. Must have rattled something loose in there. <laughs> well, Terry Francona said that the break not only cleared his mind, but quieted down his swing. He's got a very unique swing. They say he's recognizing pitches a little better. There's less movement in that swing. So they like what they've seen. Santana hit 151 in April and 169 in May. But over his last 20 games, he has raised his average for the season by more than 55 points. And he's got four hits and two walks tonight. As Kipnis strikes out, two down. Bottom half the 11th it'll be Prado Peralta Gregorius and then a pinch hitter for the pitcher spot and as we've mentioned uh, it'll either be Tuffy or Jordan Pacheco. It had been a spectacular night for the D-backs bullpen. Joe Thatcher got out of a bases loaded no out mess he inherited in the fifth. Oliver Perez a one two three six he struck out the side in order. And then got two outs in the seventh before Evan Marshall got the final out. Brad Ziegler worked a scoreless eighth, and then Addison Reed had trouble in the ninth, and now Delgado here in the 11th. And it was Gomes who had the two out RBI single that tied the game in the ninth. Well, the D backs trailed it 4 1. They trailed it 5 2. And now they trail it 8 6. Came back the first two times. Two and two. We go to the home half of the 11th. Diamondbacks trail at 8 6.
I want to go back to the top of the broadcast. One of the keys to the game. Santana. I hadn't worked out too well. He's got two singles, a double, two walks, and now a two run homer in the 11th and has given Cleveland an 8 6 lead. And now the Diamondbacks have some work to do here, the home half. Martin Prado will lead it off against Brian Shaw, who's now in line for the win. Prado Peralta Gregorius, 6 7 and 8. Martin has been on base three times, hit by a pitch. Walked and single. On one. out this way will be about the blown save and the home run that Delgado just gave up but when you look up on the scoreboard you see 14 D backs hits and 14 D backs runners left on base they were five for 19 with runners in scoring position at least to this point yeah, only in the eighth and ninth inning did they not leave runners on base Peralta's been aboard twice, walked and scored in the second, a single in the fifth. Giants lost at home to the Padres tonight 7 2 Clayton Kershaw pitched another dandy for the Dodgers. They won at Kansas City 2 nothing. So L.A. picks up a game on San Francisco. Well hit right field Murphy at the track at the wall and that ball is gone. Oh no. David Peralta his second and hold the phone it's a one run ball game. David Peralta comes on a slider that just kind of spun up there in the middle of the plate down around the knees. David Murphy gave it a little bit of a look but realized he had no chance to catch that one. Didi Gregorius. 8-7 still only one out. 1-0 one to Didi. One for four a single. Back in the second. Two and zero. Oh. Holmes wants to talk. There is action in the Cleveland bullpen with Shaw now at 30 pitches. That is the Canadian closer, John Axford.
Three and oh. Ryan Shaw has walked one, given up a home run. He's thrown 17 strikes and 14 balls. And he walks Gregorius on four pitches. Tying runs the board for the D-backs with one out. And we'll see Tuffy Gozowich. Second walk issued by Brian Shaw. Jerry Francona and Brad Mills in the Cleveland Dugout. Number nine, Tuffy Gozowich. So here's Tuffy at 233 on the year, but hitting 303 over his last 10 games, including that home run at Wrigley Field back in April. And a career high three hits in that start at Dodger Stadium June 13th. Strike one. Tuffy knowing that everything that Shaw throws is going to be working away from a right handed hitter stays right on that ball Murphy had some issues down that right field line. D.D. Gregorius rounding the bag hard at third until he sees the stop sign briefly loses his footing but manages to make it back to the base. He backs on the corners and Shaw will leave Axford will come in don't go anywhere. Diamondbacks down one they have two on one out back after this. You've got Didi Gregorius as the tying run at third. Tuffy goes to wish the winning run at first and only one out. Ender and Ciarte, the leadoff man, will be the hitter against the Indians closer, John Axford. All kinds of ways you could play this. Well, I know how I play it, and you probably know what I'm going to say before <laughs> I even say it. I love that safety squeeze in this situation. We saw D.D. Gregorius pull one back in the fifth inning with runners at first and third. Just bunt the ball, keep it away from the pitcher. Make one of the Indians defenders field the ball. No chance to turn a double play. And if D.D. reads it properly at third base, he should be able to walk home with the tying run. 
35th appearance of the year for John Axford, the former Brewers closer. Gregorius, the tying run at third. Goes a wish is the winning run at first. One out, and here is Ender Inciarte, who's had a terrific night. Three hits, all singles. He's also walked. He's scored twice. And Leon Gomes is making sure that everyone in that Cleveland infield knows how to play this. 8-7 in the 11th. First and third, one out. Along the left field line, and that is a foul ball. Well, I talked about Didi's uh, at bat in that fifth inning with Martin Prado at third, David Peralta at first base. It doesn't even have to be a great bunt. This one's bunted hard right at the second baseman, but it eliminates any possibility of a double play. Really, the only problem you get into is if you happen to pop the ball up in the air. But if the runners read it properly, it would just be one out on the play. You'd still have runners at the corners with two outs. Seven misses, two and one. Chase that one upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Axford can bring the heat. Good fastball in the mid to upper 90s. Throws a curve and a slider. It's kind of unusual for a late inning reliever to have two breaking balls, but he features both. Split last year between the Brewers and the Cardinals. John Axford, 46 saves in 2011. Diamondback fans remember the Brewers that year. 35 saves in 2012. Another 2 2. It's full. First, you might start him in this situation to stay out of a potential double play, but I doubt if Tuffy's going to be on the move over there. Goes the wish, holds. Inciarte lines it to center. That'll tie the ball game. And Tuffy's on the run for third. They were down 4 1, 5 2, and 8 6. Now it's 8 8 in the 11. What a battling at bat that time by Ender Inciarte. Swung at a bad pitch earlier in the sequence. Finally gets one down in the zone that he can handle. 
He throws his hands in the air, claps as he runs down that first baseline. A great aggressive base running by Tuffy to turn the corner and end up at third base with only one out in the inning. A four-hit night in the leadoff spot for Ender Inciarte. 17th hit for the D-backs, and now the winning run is 90 feet away with one out. Here's Parra. Parra already with four hits tonight. Indians infield in on the edge of the grass. Inciarte takes off for second. The pitch is in the dirt. But the only run that matters is standing at third. Francona here. I, I, they almost have to think about possibly walking Gerardo Parr to get Paul Goldschmidt up there. Goldie's got three previous at bats against John Axford. He struck out in two of them. Back foot up against the railing. And they will walk Parr to load the bases. Been an easy decision for Terry Francona when you consider the fact that since the beginning of the 2012 season, only Miguel Cabrera and Brandon Phillips have more go ahead RBIs in the majors than Paul Goldschmidt. Base is loaded, one out for Goldie. Up he goes a wish. The winning run at third. D backs fans on their feet. Big time cross up there. How in the world did Gomes catch that pitch and get the call? He was expecting a fastball by the way he reacted. He started to come up out of his crouch and then somehow manages to get the glove back down into the strike zone and catch that delivery. Whoa. How quick was he with that glove hand? Really quick. Wow. And consider you've got the winning run 90 feet away and he makes that play. Center. We're at the end of June and guys are still missing signs. One one. Slider mentioned actually throws both a curve and a slider. That's the harder of the two breaking pitches.
Peralta got it started with a one out home run. Gregorius walked. Goes a wish a big single. Inciarte a base hit. An intentional walk to Parra. Now here's Goldie. He strikes out on a 98 mile an hour fastball. Two down. Side part of the plate elevated up there above the belt. Tough to catch up to that fastball. Maxwood still has a lot of gas on that heater. Third time tonight, Paul Goldschmidt has struck out. Now it's up to Miguel Montero. Diamondbacks have left 14 on base. Base is loaded here, two down. Ball one. Three pre previous plate appearance of Miggy against John Axford. One strikeout, one walk, one base hit. Miguel Montero has been in this position before April 30th against the Rockies. his first career walk off and he's got a chance to make it too right here right off our camera crew down there one and two Coming at you. Watch out. Mickey, you're all right down there, right? Thumbs up. Close call. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. It's full. Eight, eight in the 11. Two outs. Base is loaded. Three balls and two strikes. Winning run 90 feet away for the D-backs. Verbally tell John Axford what pitch they were going to throw in this situation. Ever since that near cross up, they've just been using one sign back there behind the plate, but a lot riding on this particular pitch. I don't even think he's going to give a sign. They'll do it one more time. 97. Diamondbacks have stranded 17 base runners tonight. Cleveland gets two in the top of the 11th. The D-backs answer with two in the home half. 
and will go to the 12th. It's 8 to 8. Two teams that have combined to strand 27 base runners in the ball game are in the 12th. And Carlos Santana, one reason why we got here, he launched a two-run rocket out of here in the 11th to make it 8-6. But the Diamondbacks answer in the home half. A home run by Peralta, RBI single by Ender and Ciarte. 17 left on base by the Diamondbacks. That is their sixth most all-time. And now here we are in the 12th, and Matt Stites is on the mound. Last man standing in that Diamondbacks bullpen, Matt Stites, come on, making his fourth appearance of the season. It's about the time starting pitchers run back up to the clubhouse and put their cleats on, just in case. We've gone through this once or twice yeah. recently. Kirk Gibson and company formulating a plan down to the dugout as to how to proceed. Lonnie Chisenhall will lead off the 12th for the tribe. He is one for five, a two run triple. He scored a run back in the second when the Indians got four against Miley. Pitcher's spot is due up next. That's eighth in the Cleveland order after a double switch earlier in the ball game, and they've gone to the backup catcher George Guitaris. So he will hit for the pitcher. One on one. So Terry Francona will empty the bench. This is really well hit to center. And it's off the wall. Chisholm Hall will stop at second. Go ahead, run in scoring position. Nobody out. Fortunately for the Diamondbacks. Chisenhall hits this to the deepest part of the ballpark out there in straightaway center field. And Ciarte got caught a little bit too close to the barrier that time as the ball bounced back past him. No harm, no foul. Chisenhall was going to end up at second base. No chance to go to third as David Peralta hustled over there to back up that carom off the center field wall. So Chisenhall, the go-ahead run in second. Nobody out. George Kataris, the backup catcher, will hit for the pitcher. 
Only 14 at bats on the season. Kataris does have a sack bunt. And if you've got enough confidence in your left handed pinch hitter that he can roll over and hit that ground ball to the right side, move the runner up to third, you wouldn't ask him to bunt. Tars activated May 4th after missing the first 30 games of the season. Homer twice in his first game back. And then was designated for assignment three days later. Cleared waivers instead of declining a minor league assignment. Went to AAA Columbus. And now he's back up with a tribe. And Stites having issues throwing strikes. It's 3-0. Pitch walk. A double off the wall in center and a four pitch walk to the next hitter will bring a visit from the pitching coach. Mike Harkey making his way out there to the mound. I'm sure part of this is to review the scouting report on David Murphy and explore all the options here for the Indians offensively. If they try to put down a bunt, if they let him swing away, what are we going to do? And First thing we're going to do is throw the ball in the strike zone. Well, Mike Everett out to break that up. Saw an outing like this earlier from Matt Stites this year, and he kind of got himself into a whole big mess and then got his way out of it. And said it really helped when Mike Harkey went out to the mound in that situation and said, look, you, you can get out of this. You can do it. That's why you're here. And now it's a similar situation for the rookie right-hander. David Murphy. 0 for 2. He has struck out twice and walked. Only crashes in from first. So Murphy up there, two for his last 37. You've got Chisenhall at second and Kataris at first. Yeah, it's been a few years for David Murphy to put down a sack bunt, but given his recent offensive struggles and the game situation, uh, I've got to believe he's going to be looking to bunt again. Goldschmidt well in on the grass at first. One play to first. That's good, Dale. Done it for three years, but he executes perfectly here. The only play Matt Stites has is to come up and get the out at first base, putting Indians at second and third for the top of the order. Michael Bourne. Michael Bourne is one for six. He singled in the fourth. He has struck out three times. Aaron Hill well in on the grass at second base. Goldie on the edge at first. Michael Bourne hitting under 230 in June, and tonight's one for six won't help that. One or one.
Titans aren't even given any signs. I mean, there's not even a bluff of a possible squeeze bunt here. Michael Bourne not looking down. The Indians not going through any signs. It is the American League yeah, after all. Get a pitch and hit it. <laughs> and Matt Stites has shown very good stuff since he's been up here, but he has not shown himself to be a strike thrower. And this is a guy that has had excellent command throughout his minor league career. It hasn't translated yet at this level. Two balls and one strike. Misses at 97, 3 and 1. Pitch right there. That appeared to be a straight change up at 88. Well, you see that grip with the uh, middle finger and the ring finger on top of the baseball. Took about uh, five or six miles per hour off of that pitch. And frustrated Bourne, it's three and two. Got him! Fourth strikeout tonight for Michael Bourne. Saves his best pitch for last on Michael Bourne. Paints at the knees with 97 miles per hour. So once again, Stites makes a mess for himself. And once again, he's got a chance to pull a magic act and get out of it if he can get Cabrera here. Cabrera scored the run that tied it in the ninth. Chisholm Hall at third, Kateras at second. Two and oh. 98. Back to the mound, and Matt Stites gets out of it. A double and a walk put two on. It's still 8-8. Eight, eight. Home half of the 12th coming up.
Indians with 12 hits. They've left 12 runners. Diamondbacks 17 hits. They've left 17 runners. 8-8. Eight, eight, bottom 12. Cleveland got two in the top of the 11th on the Santana homer. D-backs answered with two in the home half of the 11th. Peralta, a solo shot. Then Enciarte, the RBI single to tie it. And we are still going here at Chase. They had their chances. John Axford with the bases loaded in one out, struck out Goldschmidt and Montero. And now we're here for the home half of the 12th with the ninth different pitcher for Cleveland tonight. This is Carlos Carrasco. His 20th appearance of 4 2 8 ERA. Ninth pitcher. I've got eight pitching slots on my scorecard. I hate when that happens. Yeah. I've only got 12 innings, so we need to win this now. <laughs> Let's do it. Carlos Carrasco opened the year in the rotation, went 0 and 3 with a 6.95 ERA in four starts in April, and at the end of that month he was moved to the bullpen. So you imagine he can go more than one. As Aaron Hill leads off the 12th. Ninety five is in there for a strike one and one. Hill Prado Peralta five six and seven in the D backs twelve. Aaron Hill is really having a hard time. Laying off those off speed and breaking balls down and away. Yeah, especially those sliders that start in the middle of the plate just above the knees and then sweep out of the zone low and away. Holds off nicely that time. It's even two and two. However, his base hit back in the sixth inning to drive home Gerardo Parr was on a slider that just caught a little bit too much plate, lined it back up the middle of the field. Down the line in left, but that is out of play. Just hit 2.30 a.m. in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Last pitch, a 96-mile-per-hour fastball that Aaron Hill pulled foul down the left field line, which would tell me he's probably going to get another slider low and away right here. You can scare a pitcher off of his fastball by turning one around like that, even though it went foul. Rich Carrasco wasn't expecting Aaron Hill to pull that pitch as hard as he did down the left field line. Probably come right back with a slider away. Just gets a piece of it. Still has not drawn a walk in June. He backs looking for a base runner. I think it's still June, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bounce to first. Santana has it. What a way. Martin Prado. They're down to two. Oh, just rally seats. They just moved. I hope there hasn't been a disagreement of some sort. That's how bands break up. <laughs> In the air to right, playable for Murphy. Two down. David Peralta, well, he was up in the previous inning and did this. A no 
fifth out or over the pool and right. And he's the last hope for a clean scorebook. Seven, oh and one. From ninety seven to eighty nine, oh and two. You throw 97 with your fastball, 89 is an effective changeup. <laughs> Got Peralta way out in front that time. So one, two, three, twelve to the thirteenth we go, all tied at eight. Thirteenth inning. Diamondbacks at Indians. Eight to eight. Matt Stites back out there for the D-backs. Tomorrow's probables today if you're in Ohio where it's 2.34 a.m. Corey Kluber for the Tribe and Chase Anderson who as we've told you will throw a no-hitter tomorrow. <laughs> so tune in for that. Better yet, join us down here at Chase Field. See Chase Anderson. Hey, the way this game's going, Chase Anderson may get a pinch hit at bat. <laughs> Getting down to it, the Diamondbacks uh, have exhausted everybody, but Jordan Pacheco off of their bench, and uh, Terry Francona has no position players available at this point. Matt Stites out there for his second inning of work. He is the eighth pitcher to work for the Diamondbacks tonight. We've seen Thatcher, Perez, Marshall, Ziegler, Reed, Delgado, and now Stites out of the Arizona bullpen, and there goes Josh Colmenter. Michael Bradley leads off the 13th for Cleveland. He singled and scored in the third. He has walked twice, scored a run in the 11th, came in on the Santana homer. Mark Reed awfully comfortable down there. Well, they're out of pitchers, so Reeder can just put his uh, feet up. No one to catch until Coleminter just ran down there. He's already warmed up seven relievers tonight. He <laughs> deserves to put his feet up for a little while. One and one on Brantley. And the pitcher spot is due up second for the Diamondbacks in the bottom half of the inning. Brandon McCarthy. All hands on deck. Dice now with 21 pitches. Oh. 
Ninety seven is in there for a strike two and two. That's Dykes throwing hard. Problem has been command. He's thrown 13 balls and 10 strikes. And he's gone full on the leadoff man here in the 13th. Roll to third. Martin Prado. Just does get Brantley at first. And here comes trouble. And inside out swing chasing Prado toward the line at third took everything he had in that throwing arm to gun it across there in time to get Brantley for the out. The Diamondbacks have not retired Carlos Santana yet. He walked and scored in the second singled in the third and fifth doubled in the seventh walked in the ninth hit a two run home run in the 11th. And they will overshift on the right hand side. Naturally, he goes the other way out of play. This was Santana, his 12th of the year, a two run shot to break up a 6 6 tie off Randall Delgado. Oh, and two. Sanderson Ford bullpen. Cole Mentor and McCarthy are down there. Neither guy throwing just yet. Two balls and two strikes. Called strike three. They finally retire Carlos Santana. First time tonight. I'm looking at a change up again at 89 miles per hour. A little fading action ends up right on Seven the corner. Reasons. No argument Reasons. from Santana. Well, here's Jason Kipnis with two outs. He has struck out the last three times he's been up there. Didn't want to mention it while he was at the plate, but Santana was a triple away from the cycle. He only has five triples in his entire major league career. None this season. And boy, are we hoping he doesn't get another at bat. That would be catastrophic. The sun would be up in Ohio. <laughs> Ninety six two and one. It's a lot of pitches for Matt Stites. Center field Ender and Ciarte backing up, backing up. Jason Kipnis is on the run and headed for third, and they will wave him in. Here's the relay throw, and he is out of there. Didi Gregorius 
It's Miguel Montero. Hello. It's 8-8. Well, Jason Kipnis hits a long fly ball off the center field wall. Not the best play Ender Inciarte will ever make. He lost sight of the ball momentarily, and it looks like that hit Ender in the head. Right off the back of the neck and caromed out toward left center field. Inciarte picked it up, and look at the relay here from Didi Gregorius. Boy, not only a great relay throw, but a great use of his feet to get over there and field that ball and throw all in one motion. Kipnis nowhere to go at home plate. And that keeps it an 8 8 ball game here in the home half of the 13th. A look from Fox Sports Phantom Cam. And Gregorius, who made the relay, will lead off the 13th against Carrasco. Pitcher spot is next, and Jordan Pacheco is in the on deck circle for the D backs. We've seen a little bit of everything here tonight. Good thing we had an off day yesterday. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> one and one. Well hit center field, but right boom. That was scolded, but right to the center fielder, one away. Sanderson forward bullpen, Josh Colmenter. Two backs have gone into all hands on deck mode. And we'll look at Jordan Pacheco, who has yet to start a game in a D-backs uniform, but three for seven as a pinch hitter so far. He was 236 with Colorado this year. He's up to 253. So the Diamondbacks from their bench have used Ross, Kieschnick, Owings, Gozawish, and now Pacheco. That's it. Two and zero. We've gone to the second level of the Circle mm -hmm. K strike board. Mm -hmm. 
There's a strike two and one. e has got two innings out of Matt Stite, so it looks like Cole Mentor, if necessary, in the 14th. Two and two. Santana has it two down. 17 strikeouts for Diamondbacks pitching tonight. Only three of those from the starter, Wade Miley, who only lasted four plus innings in this game. Bullpen has come in and done an outstanding job. Speaking of outstanding, here in the leadoff spot is Ender Inciarte, who has had a career night. Two innings for Matt Stites, who got himself into a jam but pitched his way out of it. Ender tonight. Four hits and a walk from the leadoff spot. Here we go. Let's start the countdown again. We went through this a few times last year. Starting to have that Saturday night in Philadelphia mm -hmm. feel to it. Break out the fireworks again. Casper Wells was pitching for the Phillies. You know, it's probably cooled off enough outside. We could open the roof and panels for the rest of this one. Can't do that. It might change the sight lines. Oh, that's true. Three and oh. Would cool things off a bit. Lovely Arizona summer evening. Mm -hmm. Well in the morning and back in Cleveland almost 3 a.m. But they're loving us on those East Coast highlight shows right now. Hold on there Ender that's the strike says Mike Everett. Kashaka and probably all still up watching right. Yeah both of them. <laughs> Down the barbershop. <laughs> Kept it open late. Out of play. Loving us all over the East Coast right now. The faithful are still here. Deep into the snack supply, though. Gap or hit one down one of the lines. Watch him run the bases. We mentioned the Indians' defense uh, make more errors than any major league baseball team this year. They have yet to make an error tonight. Cleveland error in three, <laughs> two, one. Worth the wait. Nice job by that gentleman there. Another 3 2. Reaches down and pokes that in the seats. Nice play by that young lady. Piece of cake. Worth the wait for her, too. Speaking of that, is there any cake up here? Dennis Lamb ate all our popcorn. Ender's having another one of those at bats. We've become pretty good at this.
In the air, center field, Michael Bourne. Josh Colmenter still throwing in the Diamondback bullpen as we head to the 14th inning at Chase Field. Getting close to midnight here at Chase Field. The D-backs and Indians deadlocked at eight apiece. We are getting well past the five hour mark. It's a good thing the D-backs had that well-deserved off day yesterday. Kurt Gibson began the day yesterday over at Salt River Fields. Then he went home. He took a nap and he went to the movies. He saw Supermensch and then he said he took another nap. So uh, Gibby looking well rested, but uh, a double dip of nap time yesterday for Gibby. And uh, Boy, every, all the fans here probably could have used that as well. We are getting closer and closer to midnight here at Chase Field, guys. Josh Coleman are on, Brad. Now as we start the 14th inning. Start of the year in the bullpen. Has moved the rotation and is in emergency relief duty tonight. And a work to Jan Gomes here to open the Cleveland. Yeah, 14th inning. First pitch is laced in the right for a leadoff single. Well, the Diamondbacks. Played games on 20 straight days. Finally got a day off yesterday, and here we are in the 14th. <laughs> Third baseman, Monty Chisenhall. Josh Colmenter was the man in extra innings last year. Called on so often to give you 3 4 when you needed it. Lonnie Chisenhall. First pitch swinging, pops him up. See if Mickey has room here. He's on his feet, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an artistic success. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. I got it, I got it, I ain't got it. That pizza t shirt went down oh, hard. Brother. But it all worked out in the end. 0 and 1. <laughs> <laughs> Chisenhall's two for six in this game. Who isn't? Well, it's gotten that point where people are looking in the record books. That's never good. No, usually not a good thing. Longest game in Chase Field history. Remember, that was the uh, first getaway day of the year. Who knew what was in store? April 3rd against the Cardinals, five hours and 32 minutes. Cliff Pennington won that ball game. We arrived in Milwaukee. The sun was already up the next day. That is.
is a foul ball and just barely. Says Bill Miller down there at third, one and two. He seems to have recovered nicely. Mm -hmm. And his favorite song. It's funny, he fell down with one of those balance bracelets on. <laughs> Gravity reaches down and rolls that to short. Gregoria steps on the bag, and there it is. Remember, there's one D in defense. There are two Ds in DD, and two outs. All smiles out there. Well, those are the kind you like leading that middle infielder right to the base ball hit just over the left side of the mound. Didi with a nice play steps on the bag throws all in one motion. Well we've reached an odd moment in the ball game. Corey Kluber is the scheduled starting pitcher tomorrow. And he will hit tonight. Terry Francona has already emptied the bench and so tomorrow's starting pitcher Kluber is in there. Hitting. For the pitcher. Pitcher spot is now eighth in the Cleveland lineup after a double switch midway through the ball game. You always have a guy in mind if it comes to this, a pitcher that you know can hit a little bit better than the others. He's your go-to oh, guy. Yeah, you you know which one of your pitchers is more most likely to get a sack bunt down. Which guy might put the ball in play as a hitter? Never a good option, but yeah, you you pick a guy in the rotation and uh, and that's your go-to guy in extra innings. Do you care if it's the guy who's supposed to start for you tomorrow? Well, that depends. I mean, a lot of times, uh, now, tomorrow night we have another night game. But if right. there was a day game tomorrow, chances are Corey Kluber would already be back at the team hotel. On a hop to Aaron Hill. And we will go to the home half of the 14th. Still full of energy here in the 14th inning in downtown Phoenix. Bebacks and Indians all tied at eight. Well, this is it for the Indians, at least as far as their bullpen goes. Mark Lowe, the last relief pitcher available for the Indians. It will be all starting pitchers from this point forward for both ball clubs. Mark Lowe is the 10th pitcher for Cleveland tonight. Yeah. 
Bottom 14, Gerardo Parr, Paul Goldschmidt, Miguel Montero, 2, 3, and 4 in the Arizona 14th. And it's been a big night for Gerardo Parra. Four hits and a walk. As we approach the longest game in Chase Field history, we're only a few minutes away. Closing in on 500 pitches. Base hit. Gerardo Paris, fifth hit tonight, winning run aboard. Let's go downstairs to Brad. Brad. Guys, I was just informed we have gone through 16 dozen baseballs tonight, typically about 10. So not only are in pace for the D-backs longest game here at Chase Field, but a lot of baseballs. Well, let's try and lose one more if we can, shall we? There you go. I like it. Well, the first pitch to Goldie tonight from Mark Lowe will be the 500th pitch in the ball game. So you might as well make it an even 500. Game has gone so long. Baxter's gone through three outfits. Goldie one for six with a walk. Two and zero. Oh. Looks like it's developing into another pitch around for Paul Goldschmidt, which would, of course, uh, put the winning run into scoring position as Parr would move up to second base on a walk to Goldie. What do you think about that? Well, I, I mean, you know, you pick a guy that you don't want to let beat you, even if it means doing something uh, that goes against the quote-unquote book. Not getting anything here. It's three and zero. There goes Gerardo Parra. The throw from Gomes is offline. And it looks like Gerardo Parra is injured. Just from his reaction, it looked like he caught a finger of the left hand on the side of the base as he went in on his belly. It's his fifth stolen base. Ryan DePanfalo, assistant trainer, coming out. You see that left hand reaching out for the base. The pinky finger kind of gets bent to the side a little bit there. Maybe the ring finger, possibly. Oh. 
It's a three and one count on Goldie, and now the winning run is in scoring position. Just for the record, I like that 3-0 steal. We've talked about this before. The opposing team, they just don't pay any attention. 3-0, I've got to make a pitch here to Goldie, and the catcher relaxes, the infielders relax, the pitcher relaxes, and nobody pays any attention to the base runner 3-0. That time, Parr got a huge jump. 3-1. In the air, right center field. Michael Bowen is underneath. Tracks it down. Power hits for third. Roof is open. That's probably out of here. How big is that stolen base looking right now? Catch. It's huge. And not only a tag up and advance to third, but Glenn Sherlock was very closely watching that relay throw back into the Cleveland infield. Any mishandling of it at all, he was prepared to wave Parra on home from second base. They will walk Miguel Montero. Pitch to Hill, or are you loading the bases here? I think they'll probably load the bases. It remains to be seen. Aaron Hill's grounded into 11 double plays. Martin Prado, nine. But once again, if you load them up, it uh, sets up that force play at any base or home plate. Well, still the matter of executing this, of course. With the winning run at third and one out. Montero's aboard. Well, Aaron Hill is three for four lifetime with two doubles against Mark Lowe, so I would guess they're going to walk him too. Martin Prado has never faced the Indians right handed. Time out there with Mickey Callaway, the pitching coach. Now that second baseman, Aaron Hill. Be careful for some kind of a trick pickoff play. It always bugs me when a pitching coach goes to the mound for a visit and talks to the first baseman and the third baseman. And the catcher before he even speaks to his own pitcher. Is something amiss? Well, you never know. I mean, maybe Mark Lowe has a some kind of a trick pickoff play. Maybe the Indians have one in their bag of tricks from spring training that they haven't used since then. Just be alert as a base runner. Oh and one. Mark Lowe, the tenth Cleveland pitcher of the ball again. Since 1914, that ties a franchise record for the Indians. Documented earlier in the ball game, the trouble that Aaron Hill has had swinging at those sliders low and away, and that's Mark Lowe's signature pitch. He throws it about two thirds of the time. He is seeing fewer and fewer fastballs. Could take that time. That's a pitch he's had trouble laying off of in this ball game. That hard slider low and away from the right-handed pitchers. Slider coming up. Boy, a 99 hop ground ball through that right side of the infield would work just fine right now. They're going to throw you sliders off the outside corner. Shoot one over that way. Aaron's still in pull mode on that one. We've got Santana holding Montero on at first. Kip is shaded over toward the bag at second. One and two. Bounces in front of Gomes back to the mile low pounces on it and Montero moves up. It's 
change the way Francona might play this? I think they're still going to go after Aaron Hill. They've got him in a hole with a two strike count here and uh, he's been susceptible to that slider. I mean I, I believe Lowe probably just throwing two more sliders out there and either he chases one of them and you get him out or he puts it in play and the game's over or he takes his walk. I don't think they care if they walk Aaron Hill but I think they're going to continue to try to get him out. Infielders all in on the grass for Cleveland 2 2 to Aaron Hill. In the air and that's going to do it. Diamondbacks are walk off winners in 14. Their fifth walk off win this year, their third in the month of June. Good for Aaron Hill. I mean, they, you know, they don't give you the option of passing on at bats. I'm having a rough night against that slider. I'll just pass. You've got to take your at bats. Good for Aaron Hill to go up there and battle against a slider pitcher and ultimately get the game winning hit. Nice goal. He came into the ball game four for his last 22. He was one for seven, and he knew it. That was the one. And it was another slider, the same one he's been swinging and missing all night long. This time he stayed right on it, drove it deep to the 413 mark in left center field to win the ball game. Glenn Sherlock, no worries there. Come on in. And Josh Colmenter on there as the winning pitcher after working the top of the 14th. A look at Fox Sports Phantom Cam. Aaron Hill, the walk-off winner, he's downstairs with Brent. Well, thanks. This team trailed 4-1-5-2-8-6. How satisfying is this win, given that fact? You know, it was back and forth all, all game long. It, you know, both teams did a great job. Um, we both had each other on the ropes. Then we got out of it, and it just, guys just kept battling. Cole Mentor came in, you know, Stites, everybody. It was a complete team effort win tonight, so it was, it was fun to come on, up on top. Early on, a couple of strikeouts against Masters tonight. I saw you talking with Kirk Gibson during the game. Your next at bat, you really had a great at bat and got the base hit in the RBI. Did something change? Was there a conversation with Gibby? You know, he just wants to make sure everyone's uh, not getting upset with themselves. You know, this game's hard enough, and sometimes you get down on yourself, but you never know when you're going to have a chance to win the game. So you always keep your head up and, and you know, look for the next play and look for the next ball to hit up, get the win. What can you say about the bullpen? They came in and they got Wade Marley out of a big time jam. Time and time again, they came through. You know, those guys have been doing it, you know, the last couple of weeks. They've been a great job. So um, tonight was, you know, obviously a, a great job with them. And hopefully uh, we get some short rest tonight and come back tomorrow. And you're wearing the hats, compliments of Gerardo Parra. The Venezuelan guys really came through. They combined for 14 hits and five RBI. The Venezuelan, yeah, they did it tonight, that's for sure. I mean, Ender had an unbelievable play, you know, after Jason hit that ball off the wall and got him at the plate. So, I mean, there was a lot of good defensive plays and just a fun win. Sorry it took so long, but it was good. It was worth the wait. Uh, that's a good look for you, Aaron. Thanks for stopping by. Jody, we'll send up to you. The D-backs get it done here against the Cleveland Indians, and they do it in great style. All right, thanks so much, Brad Stanky, Jody Jackson, Joe Borowski, as we begin Diamondbacks Live in just moments. And, Joe, uh, we thank the fans for sticking with us, starting the morning with us. But as Brad mentioned, the D-backs really had the battle for this one, and it was good to see. They did, and a lot of guys contributed in different ways. And we could pick a whole number of different <laughs> ones, but stick around, and we'll show you the ones that we're going to pick we out. We will continue to break it down. Stay with us through the break. The Diamondbacks, with 19 hits tonight, they defeat... The Indians by the score of a nine to eight in this one going 14 innings. D-backs live presented by CenturyLink comes your way next. <laughs> 